losing season at TSU. The new man charged with restoring the roar to this proud program is second-year head coach James Webster. Last year, the Tigers were upset by their neighbors from the South, Alabama A&M, and lost this classic for the first time ever. Tonight, the border war resumes as the Tigers and Bulldogs write another chapter in this storied rivalry. It's the 8th Annual John Merritt Classic, live on CSS. And we welcome you to the newly named LP Field. We kick off the college football season tonight with a great black college football classic, Alabama A&M's Bulldogs against the Tennessee State Tigers. Hi, everybody. Barry Gresham, along with former NFL lineman Bubba Miller, and we are psyched up, ready to go tonight for a big college football game. This game uh, really last year set the tone for the way each team's seasons would go. The Tigers struggled 2-9 and nine after losing this game, and A&M goes 9-3. and three. They win the SWAC East. This is a big game. This is a humongous game for both of these teams. Both of these teams have high expectations this year. Tennessee State made some uh, significant changes to their coaching staff last year. Uh, they have a new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, so they are expecting some changes and a different outcome in this year's ballgame. Third member of our crew and the best-looking member of our crew, we might add. Let's throw it down to the field, uh, Gussie Fuller. W Gussie, welcome to our broadcast. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Bubba. It's great to be here. I tell you, things are really warming up here at LP Field. As the head coach for Tennessee State University, Coach James Webster Jr., is looking for his first win here at home. Last season, he lost all four games, and he is hungry tonight for revenge against the A&M Bulldogs. I tell you, I'm just not so sure that those Bulldogs are ready to give up the prestige or the trophy that goes with winning the John Mary Classic. So hold on to your headsets because I think we are in for a contest. Yeah, no doubt about it, Gussie, and we look forward to getting back with you for more interviews during the game. As we look at players who will highlight tonight, changes on this outstanding defense from Alabama A&M. Is this team last year one of the best in the nation? But They've got one guy back losing three starters on the defensive line, but he is a good one. He is absolutely a good one. Uh, Preseason, uh, one AA All-American, Kevin Lockhart. There's several guys on this defense that are outstanding, but this is the guy that will stand out. He is absolutely a space eater. Six sacks last year as a junior. He comes in this year, and they are going to lean heavily on him to uh, try to replenish some of that talent that they lost last year off that defensive line. Well, for Tennessee State, their struggles last year was right with the quarterback position. They've got a new guy, a transfer from South Carolina, played at Memphis Melrose High School, Antonio Hefner. This guy was highly recruited coming out of high school, and Coach Webster is absolutely in love with him. He has gra he grabbed the quarterback position by the horn. He's been a leader. Uh, he's been effective passing the ball, hasn't turned the ball over much in preseason practice. And, uh, you know, like you said, played in the Southeastern Conference, and they are absolutely excited to have Antonio Hefner on their ball team this year. Well, the Bulldogs won it last year, 27-14, to 14, the first team ever to win the John Merritt Classic. The Tigers out for revenge tonight. Stay with us. We're going to kick it off here next from LP Field in Nashville, Tigers and Bulldogs on CSS. The 8th Annual John Merritt Classic on CSS is brought to you tonight by Bud Light, by the Tennessee Lottery, Coca-Cola, the City Paper, Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance, and Realty Mortgage Corporation. It's the final notes of a great rendition of our national anthem here tonight by Kurt Whalum. Yeah, Kurt Whalum, big time recording artist. And, uh, did a great job with that anthem, but man, it's time to play some football now, dude. It is football time here in Nashville. There's Anthony Jones, the head coach of the Alabama A&M Bulldogs. What an outstanding job he's done there. He's starting his fifth season on the hill down in Huntsville. 50 and 28 overall. Former player in the NFL. Was part of the Washington Redskins 1987 Super Bowl team. Played tight end. Played his college ball at Wichita State. And really, he has done such a great job in Huntsville with this program. Got them on the winning track. Uh, he's actually got the uh, highest winning percentage of yeah, the he coach in the history of their program. And there's Coach James Wester right there, like you said earlier in the open, trying to restore the war. Didn't win any games in the, uh, at home last year. Uh, finished with a 2-9 record and uh, really a rash of injuries kind of decimated their season a little bit. So they really committed themselves to being better in the offseason with their training. And uh, boy, they're really, really, really excited about the product they're going to put on the field this year. Well, you heard Gussie mention in the open, uh, you know, we couldn't have scripted this any better as far as the weather. It is a little cloudy overcast, 
But 73 degrees and humidity low at 59%. I tell you, you rarely see that this time of year. I know these players love that, and the broadcasters don't mind it either. It's been a good series, uh, a series that dates back way back in the 1930s, but the overall series, 18 to 6, the Tigers lead it. John Merritt Classic, this will be the fourth meeting between the two schools here in this Classic. The Bulldogs won it last year, the first time any opponent has come in and beat the Tigers here in the John Merritt Classic, and the Bulldogs have won three of the last four meetings with the Big Blue. Sean Kyler to kick it off, the Tigers won the toss, they elect to receive, and they'll take it just shy of the goal line, and the return coming back, all kinds of running room across midfield, still on his feet and brought down and there he is making his presence known early mike mason blazing speed bubba this guy is the transfer coming to tsu from north carolina has one year left with these tigers that's what he does best explosive in the return well game. we're going to be calling his game his name quite a bit tonight but uh, like you said earlier he transferred from the university of north carolina over in chapel hill and actually led them in kickoff and punt returns as a freshman so this guy has played in some big time games and uh, kick, returning kicks is what he does best. First and ten for the Tigers. Tigers come out, Antonio Hefner, the quarterback in his first Hefner, year. As he comes to the Tigers from South Carolina, another transfer. He will hand it off and met in the backfield. Maurice Young has popped for a loss on the Tigers' first play, and that defense will rise up. Let's take a look at the Tigers' starting offensive unit. Alexander, Rouser, Newton, Pitts, Adeboyejo on that front line for the Tigers' offensive line. Backs and receivers, Javaris Williams, OBC freshman of the year a year ago. Brandon Jackson, transfer from UTEP. They call him the tank. Mike Mason, Chris Johnson, the receivers, Antonio Graham going at the tight end, and there's Antonio Hefner, the sophomore. He is a guy that's been given the keys to this offense, and Fred Keist, the new offensive coordinator, has basically been living with this young man. He steps back here after a loss on first down, airs this one out, incomplete. And he has popped in this Bulldog defense. They are bringing it. We'll take a look at the team in white. The Bulldogs, their defensive coordinator, Bronski Towns, his defensive front. We highlighted Lockhart. Three guys. Trailer is a good one. And a couple of youngsters playing there. The linebackers, Jimmy Richardson playing tonight as uh, their great Johnny Baldwin will come in a little bit later. Stephen Tucker, Marcus Black is another good one across that secondary. This is a great defense. From a year ago, they were one of the best in the country. And the Tigers looking now at a third and 14. Set up a screenplay. Hefner will just dump it down in there to Young. Young breaks some tackles, and he gets the first down. Nice move there by Young, who's getting the start in that backfield tonight, Bubba. And the Tigers facing a third and long. They answer the call. Great individual effort right there by uh, Maurice Young. And uh, here we see on the... <clears throat> on the screen great time and, and, and what Tennessee State's doing right there they are taking advantage of the over aggressive A&M defense they know these guys are going to get upfield uh, several penalties on these guys last year that's how they play football that's how Jones coaches them up and Tennessee State converts a third and long right there taking advantage of that aggressiveness Gerald Morrow comes in motion they give it getting back to the line of scrimmage and that's going to be about it for the Tigers as we've seen Maurice Young be the back starting tonight. It's kind of been Young and Javaris Williams through camp. As Javaris came in a little bit out of shape, Young has um, at least getting the start here in the opener. We will see Javaris tonight, the OBC freshman of the year, but Young has played well in camp. Was told he would be a third down back, but he's getting the reps here early. Second down, Hefter to throw it out, complete it to Mason. And Mason across inside that 20-yard line. That's the tandem that uh, Coach Webster wants to see hook up. Well, that was very important that those guys got a chemistry together uh, as soon as they possibly could. And in the spring, <clears throat> these guys hooked up quite a bit. And so there was a little bit of a preview knowing that these two guys were going to get real comfortable with each other, both of them coming from big-time programs. Uh, he's Mason coming from South Carolina, Hefner coming from, so from uh, South Carolina, and Mason coming from North Carolina, excuse me. And uh, those guys are going to develop quite a chemistry here pretty soon. Here's a pitch out to the right side. There's Javaris Williams. He breaks the tackle. He falls forward. We have a helmet popping off some Tiger's head out there as Williams 
gets the carry, and there's their first flag. We saw a Javaris, lot of those last year. Javaris Williams is uh, trying to work himself into shape, but more importantly, trying to work himself out of uh, Coach James Webster's doghouse. So he came in extremely out of shape. Expectations were high for him this year, coming off that great year last year. And so far in the preseason, he hasn't lived up to those expectations. Jeff Howier, our referee tonight. We get a hold on the Tigers. Yes, you got the great return on the kickoff by Mike Mason, and they were faced. Holding number 64 on the offense. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. It's the center, Cecil Newton, that picks up the hold, but the Tigers on a third and long play picked up a big first down on a screen play to Young. Mason got a first down a moment ago on a little flare pass out from Hefner. And the penalties can kill a drive quicker than anything, and the Tigers get one here, a hold on their center, Newton. With these rule changes this year, uh, with the clock starting <clears throat> on the change of possession, uh, Tennessee State opting to uh, go with the no huddle so far this year. This is serious. And Hefner, they faked to the tailback. They faked the end around. He kept it and just had to drop his head and go as we see another flag here on the field. Boy, this is what killed Tennessee State's momentum in this game last year. It's truly deja vu. Get a couple good plays going, get a drive going, and then start going in reverse. And, and uh, we're seeing a, a replay of that instance last year with them on all these penalties, two back-to-back -back penalties. We saw our officiating crew tonight again. Jeff Heilier is our referee. As he confers with his staff, now he's ready to... Illegal motion, number five on the offense. The penalties declined, second down. Chris Johnson moving, starting wide receiver from Glencliff High School here in Nashville. So the penalties, back in the Tigers up. Second and 17 from the 25 of A&M. Hefner in that shotgun. Goes back over the middle, it's dropped. Had his man wide open. That's Williams out of the backfield. Williams had all kinds of room, and he wanted to take off before he caught it. Nice protection by that offensive line. That's something that uh, they struggled with uh, early on in the preseason against their own defense. But Hefner sits right there in the pocket, and, hey, Javaris Williams has to understand if he wants to get out of the doghouse, he's got to make catches like that. Illegal formation by the offense. Not enough players on the line of scrimmage at the snap. Penalties declined. Third down. Wow. Well, I tell you, it, it, it'd be about second and 47 right now if A&M accepted these penalties, but uh, they're choosing to decline them and showing a lot of confidence in their defense early on. So penalty decline, third down and 17 at the 25. Tigers have come out with their new offensive coordinator spreading it out, trying to just really punch A&M early. Here's a pass, and it is caught at the 15 on a nice draft. Jeremy Stevens, senior from uh, Stratford High School in Nashville, as Hefner completes the pass here to Stevens. This is something he's very comfortable doing. Did a lot of this in South Carolina, particularly uh, when w the year he was there with Lou Holtz. But he's very comfortable rolling that out of the pocket, and uh, they will try to get him to break and tame as much as they possibly can. Also an effective runner on the edge. Eric Benson. Eric Benson's going to come on. Official stop play for a moment. We get a timeout. Called for by AM. We will take a break, come back and see Eric Benson try to put the Tigers on top. The field goal coming up after this timeout here on CSS. There's a Bulldog trying to get the second straight win in this John Merritt Classic. His team backed up. But they stopped the Tigers, and the Tigers will attempt a field goal here by Eric Benson, their sophomore kicker out of Rowlett, Texas. This will be a 32-yarder from the hold of Richard Hartman. Reggie Moore, the long snapper. It's up by Benson, and Benson gives the Tigers a 3 to nothing lead. Eric Benson, a year ago, was 6 out of 8 from field goals. Suffering from a bad back during training camp, but he boots that one through the uprights. You know, they, Coach Webster has to be happy with that drive. Uh, particularly considering how many penalties they got right there. And that says a lot about Antonio Hefner and what he brings to this team. I think he's kind of having a calming effect on his offense. Every, you don't see guys panic uh, like you did last year. You see guys very relaxed, very comfortable, and I think that was indicative of uh, how they converted on that drive 
and uh, were able to get three points out of that, out of what started out as a good drive, but ended up pretty disastrous. But Tigers up three to nothing. Let's check in with Gussie Fuller. Hi, I am joined by the director of athletics here at Tennessee State University, Coach Teresa Phillips. It's very glad to have very glad to have you here, Coach Phillips. Hey, it's great being here. It's great being here. Thank you, thank you. I'd just like for you to tell us how significant is the John Mary Classic to the city of Nashville? Well, it's so big for Tennessee State University. You know, John Mary being one of our great icons of coaching, and it's just a way to remember, remember him. It's a way to bring Nashville together. Labor Day weekend, you can't beat it. We have great partners in Alabama. A and M, so we think it's going to be a great, great night tonight. All right. Well, so far so good. Your Tigers have already put you on the board. Yeah, so that's, you got, all, that's always good to get that early lead, Gus. Well, so. you're headed in the right direction, and we look forward to seeing you later. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Gussie. Yes. Manuel Edwards, back deep, along with Jonathan McConico. We'll see Tim Eric kick it off who's really been booming the ball in camp. It'll be taken by Edwards at the four for the Bulldogs. And he will not get the return that Mike Mason had to electrify this crowd as he's knocked out at the 18. We'll see the Alabama A&M Bulldogs offense for the first time come out tonight. Take a look at their offensive line. Turner, Johnson, Franklin, Smith, Sanders. Those two guards in that center are good ones. Their backs and receivers, Nick Luke, is back, had a great season a year ago. Travis O'Neill, the fullback. Edwards, Francis, go at receivers. Charles Moody, a big target at tight end. And their quarterback is Kelsey Luke, the team MVP from a year ago. He really struggled in this ball game, but he hit his stride after the first two games of the year. And he comes out throwing on first down. He goes deep, goes for it all. And it's incomplete as they come out trying to strike early against the Tigers. You know, I think it's very uh, significant to note that all five of these starters on this offensive line started in this very game last year. So these guys have a lot of experience and uh, cohesion playing together. Kelsey Luke, his numbers last year, big time. And you factor in his first two games where he just did not do anything. He really struggled in this game here last year. He's a transfer from Auburn. Of course, that's his brother. Nick Luke is the tailback. So the Luke brothers... They got things rolling last year, and after winning this ball game, they settled into their roles, and the uh, Bulldogs went on to win the SWAC Eastern Division. This one is caught. And it's going to end up being about a six-yard gain as the catch is made by Anthony Mitchell. Here's the Tigers' defense. Maurice Davis, Aaron Mars, Almonte Duncan, Jonathan Edwards, a good one is back, one of the defensive captains. At linebacking crew, they're missing, of course, Wesley Holmes, a good one. Deshaun Bigham, who played a lot last year, is starting. Calvin Baker, who was at Florida a year ago as a red shirt. This secondary is rock solid. Dominique Rogers and Aaron Strong, the only Tiger on the all-OVC preseason team. And this defense has got some holes to fill this year, but certainly some talent. And we'll see some more guys come in on that two-deep chart, guys that can really play. Here's a first down catch. And that big target out there, Charles Moody. Nice catch by Moody. You, you look at this guy and you think he's in there just to block. But uh, had a couple nice catches last year. Big soft hands and goes out and grabs that pass and gets his pass upfield for the first down. Now Kelsey Luke a year ago completed 56% of his passes. As you saw his numbers a moment ago, 13 touchdowns a year ago. And, you know, the tight ends are very uh, much part of this offense, especially when you get down in that red zone. Here's the give to Nick Luke. Luke goes off tackle at left side. And Nick Luke a year ago had five 100-yard games, and he started his career at Alabama. You talk about the Luke family. You got one guy going to Auburn and then the other one going to Alabama. How that works out, I'll never know. Nice run. Better an offensive line, like I said earlier. Chris Franklin getting a nice block and uh, Luke doing a good job of getting his pass down, getting upfield, and they're going to really lean heavily on uh, Nick Luke tonight and uh, his brother Kelsey, like you said earlier, pulling the trigger. Just shy of the 40 for A&M, second down and five. Rolling out to the near side, and he can, can do this a lot. The sprint out play really hurt the Tigers a year ago. And here Luke keeps it. Luke last year did have a 100-yard rushing game. The third leading rusher was Kelsey on the team, and what a weapon he is. Like you said uh, also earlier in the open, he, he, was, he was not very good last year uh, in this game and was actually replaced and came back in the game at one point. Uh, he was virtually ineffective for pretty much the greater part of the game but like you said that third game 
Uh, something clicked in his head, and he uh, really, really, really first turned on steam. Bulldogs move the change. They've got it first and 10. The 46 still in their own territory. And a little throw out flare pattern right across to the left side. Whoa, what a hit. Whoa. A big time hit, and the ball is loose. There was a major league collision on that far side. Boy, that was Dominique Rogers who came up and laid the wood on him. Wow, what a, what a great hit. We talked about Aaron Strong uh, being the only preseason all OVC guy. He comes in, grabs him low with a great tackle, mm. and Dominique goes in there and cleans his clock. Boy, that is what they didn't have enough of last year with this defense to come out and it set an excellent tone for this season already. Kevin Francis, who got the start tonight, a change in their lineup over Anthony Mitchell. Francis is a veteran receiver. Two touchdown scores a year ago. Gets his bell rung here early. Here's a give to Luke. And Nick Luke will carry a few tacklers, and they'll move the chains again as they move into Tiger territory. Boy, I wasn't aware you could shift two guys simultaneously at the snap of the football. I think the uh, officials might have missed one right there. Hey, they weren't missing them down at the other end a moment ago. The Tigers had some shifting and didn't at one time did not have enough players on the line of scrimmage as three big penalties halted their opening drive. But they were able to get a 32-yard field goal out of it to take the three-to-nothing lead here in a fast-paced first quarter. At the 43 now, the Tigers at first and 10 for the Bulldogs, rolling out to the near side. Picked off! Tigers get the pick, Aaron Strong, and he'll take it across midfield to the 48. He stepped right in front and gets the first interception of the season for the Big Blue, and they stop the Bulldog drive. Well, it's no secret why you've seen on uh, two consecutive plays there why this guy's a preseason all OVC candidate. Uh, outstanding in the run, running game, comes up from that strong stage position, but also excellent uh, in the slot. He goes out and lines up wide, which you rarely see safeties do, be able to line up on a guy wide and be able to play the field like that, get a great jump, and uh, has swung the momentum uh, for the Big Blue Tigers here as they go out and uh, try to capitalize on this turnover. And the Tigers a year ago, we talked about the struggles they had on the offense, but one of the problems they had, they were a minus 15 in takeaways, but they get a big turnover here. And the Tigers offense, which was clicking early, then the penalty started. Three straight penalties halted their drive inside the 20 of the Bulldogs. Now Hefner, his second time, he'll step up in the pocket. He'll get dropped at the 45 for a big loss, and it's a jailbreak with these Bulldogs. They bring the heat. They really try to put you on your heels on, on uh, first and second down. Uh, we've seen this on two consecutive series. They really come out and put a lot of pressure on you. And that time, I think they brought one more uh, defender than TSU had to block. Christopher Trailer. Eight and a half sacks a year ago. First team preseason all SWAC. He led the SWAC in sacks in 2004. And he'll step up and get one here as the Tigers backed up now to the 44 on a second and 17. Hefner, he'll roll out to the right. Flag is down. He'll throw back across the middle. And he will complete the pass to Mason. Mason just finds a soft spot, gets down, and Hefner finds him. They'll wait and see what the flag is over on the far side of the field. Hefner is so comfortable getting out on that perimeter and uh, throwing the football, but I know Coach Webster would like to see him stay a little cleaner uh, as this game progresses. That's the third time we've seen him go down already and just half, halfway through the first quarter. Bulldogs get a penalty here. Both teams, there were just tons of penalties a year ago. If you may recall that game, the Tigers were able to actually come back and almost pull that game out due to some personal foul penalties on the Bulldogs late. Number 57 on the defense was lined up at the neutral zone at the snap. The penalties declined third down. That's Johnny Baldwin, who did not start tonight due to a violation of team rules, but man, he is a great player, an All-American candidate. He was lined up in the neutral zone after throwing back over to Mason in the middle of the field. Mason making his presence known early, had a 52-yard kickoff return to start this one. Hefner in the shotgun, and they're coming after him again. He looks for any daylight, breaks some tackles, and Hefner will get a first down. Very nimble on his feet. How he got through there, I'll never know. Did a lot of running uh, at Memphis Melrose, and obviously that's the reason Coach Lou Holtz wanted him in his program. Uh, came in and, and didn't quite fit what Steve Spurrier wanted to do, and, but he has definitely found a home here at uh, TSU. Made one start at quarterback. 
against Auburn a year ago. 133 yards in that game and a touchdown. They were hammered by the Tigers. And his final game as a Gamecock, he actually lined up at receiver against Missouri in the Independence Bowl. But Hefner, one of the highly recruited players in high school, ranked as a number four athlete in the state of Tennessee back in 2004. And you see why Lou Holtz wanted him. Tigers go to the running game here on first down. And they busted across to about the 33. Let's go down to Gussie Fuller. Hi, I'm joined with the chair of the John Mary Classic, Mr. Clinton Gray. And I might add that he has been the chair for eight years consecutive. Mr. Gray, can you tell us how you have managed to grow this classic every year until this one? Well, thank you very much. By having great, great support from the administration, having a great committee to work with, and a great and outstanding athletic director. That's fantastic. Well, I agree. From the information that I have, I would say that you do have a fantastic staff around you. Oh, we thank you for being here today, and thank we look you. forward to seeing you next year. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, Gussie. Javaris Williams gets the carry there as he picks up first down yardage. We got a Tiger down. I believe that's Alexander. And that is one area that the Tigers do not have experience depth at on that offensive line. We're going to check on the status of Avern Alexander when we come back. Tigers on the march. They lead it 3 to nothing in the John Merrick Classic on CSS. Go ahead. Have a ball. That's Avern Alexander starting left tackle for the Tennessee State Tigers. The junior out of Lynchburg, Virginia is down and they're bringing the card out and you know, if there's one area that this team uh, just couldn't afford to, to lose anyone is on that offensive line with limited depth, and we may see some young players uh, get some action here. We're still early in this ball game with 4.57 to go. And the first quarter, the Tigers got on the board first. Eric Benson, a 32-yard field goal. TSU has a 3 to nothing lead here in Nashville against Alabama A&M. We're going to pause and come back with more from Nashville after this on CSS. Back here at LP Field, Barry Gresham and Bubba Miller, up, Bubba Miller upstairs. We've got Gussie Fuller working the sidelines. It's Avern Alexander starting left tackle for the Tigers. Uh, did not look good. They have brought out the cart. And as we were talking about just before the break, very limited depth on this offensive line for Tennessee State. As you start looking at their two deep chart, and you've got to go to some young players. Uh, if the Tigers lose someone on that offensive line, they've got guys out. Eugene Banks, a big loss, had his ankle rolled up on, and he's been out for uh, over a week. Alan Sane, also an offensive lineman, broke his hand at the beginning of camp. And I tell you, Bubba, as you well know, that offensive line, that's the key to your, your season, especially that offense. And, and if you've got a guy down in limited depth, you're going to throw somebody into the fire here. Well, Avery Alexander was uh, <clears throat> played a lot of ball for him before he's a junior. Uh, hopefully, it'll be okay. No, no kind of serious damage, but I, I can just tell you from experience when they when they bring out the air cast and roll you out of there, uh, it's highly unlikely he'll be back tonight. But uh, a lot of inexperience on that line. Uh, Duval Young was the guy uh, warming up over there. Looks like he's coming in, and he's a freshman, and uh, he's about to he's about to get his first action on the uh, Division One college level. So. Uh, not a lot of depth at Tennessee State on that offensive line. They really felt good about the five guys they had going in, but as you well know, uh, when you're playing football at this level, you need six or seven to even eight uh, guys to make it through a season. So Duval Young is in out of Clemson, South Carolina, oh, yeah. South Carolina High School Tiger. Lineman of the Year. He's a big guy, 300-plus pounder. So the Tigers, after the delay, the pitch out to Javaris Williams. He's brought down right at the... Uh, line of scrimmage and a flag is on the play on this one looks like what they've done Barry is uh, they brought uh, they brought young in and they've moved him to left guard and uh, Adeboyo has come over and uh, is now playing the right tackle position uh, where Alexander went out so a little shuffling going on there and, and that's kind of how it works I mean you when one guy goes out it kind of throws the whole chemistry off, throws a ripple effect throughout that entire offensive line, but I think they got five guys out there they feel good about, but none of them are playing the position they started in. Holding, number 70 on the offense. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Then you get your veteran leader 
of that offensive line. Damian Pitts gets a holding penalty. Pitts a senior and Rouser a senior and Adeboyagio. So they're three seniors with some experience. Rouser, Newton, and Pitts, the two guards in the center, all from Atlanta. None of them played together in high school, but all hail from the ATL. Here's a pass over, caught right in the middle of the field, trying to break some tackles up to the 10. That's Maurice Young. Now check that, Javaris Williams at 28 instead of 20, and Javaris put on a little burst of speed there after he made the catch. Well, that's the guy we expected to see. That, that's the guy that everybody thought was going to come in in shape and uh, has, has worked himself back in his good graces, but this is the explosive OBC freshman of the year that we thought we were going to see. Got some help down there from his lineman. We see Pitts kind of make up for that hole on the last play, get downfield and get in the block, and now they've put themselves back in the red zone again and are knocking on the door to uh, score against a &M. So Javaris gets the Tigers into an area they had a lot of trouble a year ago into that red zone. They've got it. First and 10 from the 13 of the Bulldogs. Tigers with a three to nothing lead. We play in the first quarter here in this John Merritt Classic. And Williams that time, not a lot of happening against that defensive front. That's been a good battle really up front tonight when they have really gone at it because they're going to bring the pressure. And this offensive line of the Tigers has been trying to meet that challenge and, and run the ball. They've had a lot of success throwing it tonight. Looks like they're getting more and more comfortable uh, handling this pressure that uh, A&M is trying to put on them. So we got Rouser at right tackle now. Newton and Pitts at their natural position and uh, Young at left tackle and that boy Owen. That one batted down after out of that shotgun again was almost welcoming the rush. He's been able to dump the pass over the blitzers and that time, the big call of Dominic Cummings, 6'2", junior, able to bat that one down. We'll see it here. Well, we we see Tennessee State trying to run a lot of screens, and we uh, something that we alluded to is the aggressiveness of this front seven by the uh, Bulldogs, and Tennessee State at every, every opportunity they get, trying to take advantage, let those guys rush and get behind them a little bit, and that's how they've had success getting in this manageable third down. Third nine from the 12 of the Bulldogs. After again in that shotgun, he'll step up. He'll sling it out there right through the hands down at the two-yard line of Stevens. And the Tigers again are going to be looking at a short field goal as Benson will come back out in this Bulldog defense. They have been able to keep the Tigers out of the end zone thus far. Well, it's twice they've been down there, and you, you certainly... Uh, with Kelsey Luke and the explosiveness of this Bulldog offense. You certainly want to start putting some of these uh, in the end zone, but hey, here's an opportunity to put some points on the board off the turnover. This will be a 29-yarder. Reggie Moore, the long snapper. Richard Hartman, the holder. Eric Benson will kick it right through the uprights again as Benson is two for two in the ball game, and the Tigers have a 6 to nothing lead now on Alabama A&M. Let's go down to Gussie Fuller and get an injury update on Avern Alexander. Well, guys, the team is excited, the Tigers of Tennessee State, that they have just scored again. But unfortunately, Avern Alexander, number 77, is being examined for a dislocated ankle. So we will wait and see what the verdict is. Back to you, Barry. All right, Gussie. Thank you. You know, it didn't look good. You didn't anticipate hearing anything good from that when the players carted off. And uh, and we will wait and hear the doctor's report on Aver and Alexander. But if uh, you're the young guy thrown in there tonight, Duval Young, hey, it's opening night. Lace him up and go. Your number's been called. Yeah, he did pretty good in there <clears throat> the couple plays that he came in. And, uh, you know, the, moving him inside, I think, is a good you know, he's got seniors on on the left of him. They put Adboyo, Adboyo over there on the left side of him. Then he's got the center, Cecil Newton. So I think he'll be very comfortable in there at uh, left guard. There you see the scoring drive. Tigers only had to go 37 yards. Uh, and then they were stopped as they got down. Not quite inside the 10, stopped down at the 12. And Benson boots a 29-yard field goal. But again, it was all set up by Aaron Strong. The senior got the interception of Kelsey Luke. And the Tigers go up on the 
turnover category in this game, a statistic that they were behind in all season a year ago. And we'll see Tim Errett again kick this one away. Errett transfer out of Florida Atlantic. This one will bounce and will hit the pylon right at the goal line. And the Bulldogs will come out on offense, trying to get it going. You know, they started moving the football that first series. They were moving the chains, and then Luke, I tell you, just a uh, telegraph one strong, stepped right up and picked him off. Yeah, it wasn't a good read at all. Threw it right, threw it right to him. And uh, Tennessee State's one of the places that they have really put a point of emphasis on in the preseason. They want to go out. They want to create some turnovers. They want to get some easy scores this year. So Kelsey Luke will lead the Bulldogs back out. They trail six to nothing. They trailed in this game a year ago, seven to nothing before getting a field goal on the board right before the half. First and 10 from the 20 are the Bulldogs. Quick drop, throwing it out there. A nice move to get across the 30. Thomas Harris, six foot, 210 freshman with great speed. He's a guy that Randy Fuller, the uh, DB's coach for the uh, Tigers, was telling me about. They knew about this kid, although there was no film on him naturally as a freshman. But they uh, they knew he would be part of the package because if he gets by you, he is gone. He's got that kind of speed. And that time he was able to elude one tackler, but got the first down for the Bulldogs. Big receivers for Alabama A&M. All these guys are really, really tall and really, really thick. Out of the eye, long count for Luke. Again, those quick drops. So it was a little patter over across the middle, a little slant in to the uh, 36. Emmanuel Edwards, another another big target. Edwards is senior. That was a well-designed play. It looked like they were going to throw the quick screen to the slot, and then uh, Edwards slides in behind there on the slant. A well-designed play, and another play trying to get Kelsey Luke into some kind of rhythm here as we have another uh, Tennessee State player down. Edwards led the team a year ago with 28 receptions, 415 yards. We're going to take a timeout as we check on this injured Tiger player. Six to nothing is our score. The Tigers on top of the Bulldogs on CSS. Maurice Davis, you see him there, helped off the field, trying to walk around. Oh, it looks to be like uh, an ankle. Davis. Starting at the defensive end, the sophomore out of Irondale, Alabama. Second and three as we tick down to the 92nd mark of this first quarter. Tigers leading 6 to nothing against the Bulldogs here. Kelsey Luke gives to Nick Luke. He's hitting the backfield, dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Nick Luke, the ball carrier. And on the stop for the Tigers. 47. Lamar Divins is in the game. <coughs> the... Uh, from uh, Lincoln County High School to Vanderbilt transfer, and he uh, had a impressive in the preseason, but a ankle injury has kind of slowed him down a little bit, and now uh, he thinks he's healthy. He's got he's back in the game, and I really think he's going to give his team the punch. Nice stop by Daniel Williams, who was moved over to linebacker. They would call he was a starting fullback a year ago for the Tigers, but was a linebacker before getting that move. Now he's back at his original position. Here on a third and two, rolling out, rolling out Luke. Will throw it completed for the first down at the 49. Nice catch made for the Bulldogs. Francis, who got popped earlier by Dominique Rogers, makes a big possession catch there, and the chains are moving for the Bulldogs. That's just experience at the wide receiver position. Kevin Francis knowing uh, his quarterback's in trouble, and that just turns into scramble drill and just finds a spot on that sideline and sits down. And it gives his quarterback a good target, and that's excellent execution on the scramble drill by Kevin Francis. 18 catches a year ago, 222 yards, two touchdowns for Francis. Got the start tonight at receiver along with Edwards and Moody, their tight end. So a first down just shy of midfield. And they run a little reverse, a little fake, and a handoff coming to this near side. The ball is loose. Oh, they got it. And the Tigers pounce on it as it gets out of bounds. A&M coaching staff right in the middle of that huddle as well. They're saying the Bulldogs are going to recover that it got out of bounds before the Tigers got their hands on it. We're going to have to look at this one. Thomas Harris on that end around with that blinding speed. And the Bulldogs are going to keep it. Let's take a look at it. You know, it looked like he got his knee down before he slid out of bounds. And this might be the type of play the coach uh, Webster will want to replay. Here comes
James Harris again on that reverse. Excellent call, taking advantage of... Uh, the ball was fumbled forward, out of bounds. It's returned to the spot of the fumble first down. Wow. Wow. That's a tough call right there. Great play. Great hit. Rodgers and Strong hooking up. All right. Wow. Hey, that's awfully close. You know, if I'm Coach Webster, I might want to save that. I might want to save that challenge for later on in the game, but that, that boy, if you had a couple of them, there's one you would definitely use right there. So first and 10 at the 31 at the spot of the fumble. The Bulldogs have it. And they like throwing that pass out, a little flat pass, and they they got guys that block pretty well. When they set up their screen plays or their passes out in the flat, they'll get the receivers out there blocking. And We've uh, come to the end of the first quarter. Bulldogs are on the march, but it's been all Tigers so far. TSU leading it 6 to nothing. Back with the second quarter after this on CSS. Get ready for the big show coming up at halftime. We've still got a quarter to go, and the Bulldogs are on the march here in the John Merritt Classic at LP Field here in Nashville. A second down and four play. Kelsey Luke, the quarterback. For the Bulldogs out of Huntsville, Alabama, they trail the Tigers six to nothing. First play of the second quarter. He'll roll out to this side. He's going to keep it and just get down. His blue shirts come in from everywhere. Well defended option right there. It's the first time we've seen that tonight from Kelsey Luke, but uh, Tennessee was, State was all over that. A little option play, and he kept it, but there was nothing there for him. Luke, the team MVP from a year ago, passed for over 2,000 yards and third leading rusher on the team, rushed for over 500 yards a year ago, eight rushing touchdowns, so kind of a uh, double threat at quarterback. The officials are going to stop play for a moment. Big break for the Bulldogs a moment ago. It looked like Mitchell. And Strong put his helmet right on the football, and it popped up on a great end-around run, a reverse. Please reset the game clock to 14 minutes, 30 seconds. Cosby Baptiste got the fumble, but they said he was out of bounds when he recovered it. It was very close. And the Bulldogs were able to keep possession. They keep the drive alive. They look at a third down and three at the 24 of the Tigers. They trail six to nothing. They dump it off to the big tight end. He's going to rumble. Get the first down and more as his legs are taken out from under him, just shy of the 10. And that is uh, the big guy, John Smith. Smith at 6'5". Caught a touchdown from Luke in this game a year ago. Boy, nobody uses their tight ends as, as, as much as A&M does. They really make good use out of these guys underneath particularly. Now, those two tight ends, Moody at 6'2", and Smith at 6'5", they combined for 29 catches and six touchdowns a year ago. They really use that height advantage when they get down to these jump ball situations in the end zone. Rolling out is Luke to the far side. He's just going to have to run and get out of bounds. As he was looking back there, the Tigers had great coverage and good pursuit to run him out of bounds. Alabama A&M for the first time tonight in the red zone, and uh, Kelsey Luke kind of ran out of real estate there, but you see the speed, you see the athleticism, athleticism of Kelsey Luke, able to get to that corner and uh, pick up maybe a yard. It's going to bring up a second down and nine at the Tiger 14. The Bulldogs trying to tie this ball game up as we play here in the second quarter. Out of the eye behind Luke. Rolling out to this side, throwing it out, and it is dropped, bobbling it all the way. The two brothers can't hook up. Kelsey tried to hit his brother, Nick Luke, and he just could not pull it in. Well-placed throw right there. He might have had some real estate to uh, pick up that first down or possibly even get in the end zone, but Luke was feeling, Kelsey Luke feeling a little bit of pressure and wasn't able to get a very good pass to his brother, Nick. Man, he did everything to catch sure, that yeah. one. It ate him up. Hey, that was a great effort. That ball beat him up a couple times. So now looking at a big play here. Third down and nine at the Tigers 14. They bring three receivers to this near side. I wouldn't be surprised to a quarterback draw right here. 
Got him spread out, and a quick throw. It's caught, and getting into the end zone, and a great fake on a super move, and that is, at, check that, Thomas Harris. Randy Fuller, the defensive backs coach for the Tigers, said they've got a speed demon, this freshman. He's got size. We're going to be aware of this guy, and he has made his presence known in this game. a &M comes out with trips to the left, so you think they're going to roll out because uh, they've run that play several times tonight already, and then they go isolation backside <coughs> with Thomas Harris on the slant. Well-designed play, well-executed by Harris. Extra point is blocked. As Kyler gets that one swatted back in his face. And that one could come back to haunt him. As we get another look at the touchdown, 6-6 six to six here in Nashville. Tennessee Lottery. Tennessee Lottery. Go ahead. Have a ball. Well, the bands are cranking it up now. The aristocrat of bands from Tennessee State playing as they answer the Bulldogs who have tied the ball game up. You see the scoring drive. That's the great thing about these HBCU games. Only battles not on the field. That's right. Tyler to kick it off here. And they kick it off short to keep it away from Mike Mason. But instead, they get it to another speed demon, Jarrett Morrow, who's back from injury. As you recall, he broke his wrist in game three a year ago. And the product out of Memphis Melrose. Here's that block PAT. As we try to see which Tiger got in there. And that may have been Dominique Rogers. I think that was Dominique Rogers off the edge there, uh, getting in there. And boy, does that take some speed to come in there off the edge and block a uh, extra point. That yeah, was either Rogers got it or Daniel Williams coming right up the gut. But either way, they block it. Tyler, the new kicker, we haven't had to mention that much, but uh, Jose Osario, all slack performer, handle all of their kicking duties. He's graduated, and Tyler does the kicking now, the freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. So the Tigers ready to answer. Six to six ball game. We play here in the second quarter at LP Field. Antonio Hefner has yet to get his team into the end zone, but he's been able to march them down the field for two Eric Benson field goals and hold everything as the flags come in on the Tigers on the snap. That's Eddie Woods at tight end moving. The senior also from Memphis Melrose High School. Four catches a year ago, made five starts. And Coach Keis, the new offensive coordinator, told me that Eddie Woods is his third down guy. It's really hard to keep Eddie off the field. He's such a great blocker. Antonio Graham, who started tonight, it gives you those matchup problems. As he's put on 40 pounds, moved from a receiver to tight end. But Eddie Woods, just one of those glue guys. And Eddie Woods was very effective uh, last year for them. And like you said, that rare combination. A good block right there by Eddie Woods. Can we see. Javaris Williams on the carry. Again, Maurice Young got the start tonight and was uh, part of a very good opening drive after Mike Mason had a 54-yard kickoff return. And then after he loosened him up a bit, then you bring in the, the workhorse, Javaris Williams, who set the single-season freshman rushing record for the Tigers a year ago, 872 yards as he broke Charles Anthony's mark and was named the OVC Freshman of the Year. Nothing happening for him there. It's second and 11 as they spotted at the 34 in a 6-6 six six ball game. Just the type of game we thought it would be tonight. A little play action. They're coming after Hector. Hector stumbles and just slings it up and gets picked off. Bad decision there, picked off at the 45. And being pushed out of bounds, Bobby McClain, a weak side linebacker, got a gift. And Hefner that time, not sure what he was doing. I, he think just gonna, it. I think that's going to come back on a defensive hole right there. As, uh, Murrow was trying to get to that ball. He was mobbed, uh, trying to make a play on that ball. I think that's going to come back. Uh, that was Mason trying to make a play back for the ball, and uh, somebody from behind grabbed him, and uh, it, it was pretty blatant hold. TSU caught a break on that one. Well, here the explanation from Jeff Hyer. Pass interference, number 19 on the defense. The penalty is to the spot of the foul, and automatic first down. Frank Moore got the start tonight. 
And what a break for the Tigers. He stumbles right here, Hefker does. Yeah, he's got to at least give him opportunity to catch the football. And we talked earlier about that offensive line. Abram Alexander, of course, went out, and we saw uh, that was Duval Young right there, who I think missed the block. On uh, we'll take a break. Come back with more here. 11:55 to go before halftime. We are deadlocked at six in the John Merritt Classic. Back here at LP Field. Fans coming in after a big day of tailgating and a big week of activities and, and events surrounding the 8th Annual John Merritt Classic. First down and 10 from the 44. The Tigers on the move trying to answer the Bulldog touchdown. It tied the game. Hepner here. They're going to hit Johnson for crossing route. He gets into Bulldog territory inside the 40. And Chris Johnson from Glencliff High School here in Nashville, his brother CJ, the all-time career yardage leader, is a receiver at Tennessee State. Good genes for those two guys. You know, every time Hefner's got time, every time his offensive line has come through and done what they needed to do, he's found somebody open. I mean, this guy's a skilled passer, threw for a bunch of yards in Memphis Melrose, led that team to a uh, state championship game against or, uh, against Hillsborough High School from here in Nashville. So this guy's is effective throwing the football when he has time. And I'm sure he uh, is the happiest guy to get that reprieve of that uh, interception a moment ago on that holding call. Javaris Williams gets popped again. I tell you, it's been tough running on this Bulldog defense tonight. Well, we highlighted that defensive line <coughs> in the pregame. Kevin Lockhart, Justin Harper, and uh, of course, Johnny Baldwin, who didn't start this game for disciplinary reasons, but uh, came in pretty quick yeah. on that second series. So. Uh, it's going to be tough sledding against this against this uh, A&M front seven, but Tennessee State being very effective throwing the football, and he is uh, Antonio Hefner showing his experience early on. Tigers have him spread out, trips to the far side. This one bounced up in the air, a little bit behind the intended receiver. Very lucky that that one dropped to the turf for the Tigers, trying to hit Stevens. He was lined up part of that trips package, and he makes his little slant across the middle. That one behind him, and it pops straight up in the air. Caught another break there. Wasn't a bulldog in the area, but Hefner wanted, maybe want to put it out in front of him a little bit more. Third down and 10 from the 37 of the Bulldogs. Again, same package. Hefner's been in the shotgun several times tonight, and there is movement on that Tigers offensive front. Boy, this, this is not what he wanted to see uh, Coach James was before this game. With all these penalties. And, and, and not the kind of penalties that you can accept as a coach. Aggressive penalties. Before the snap, false start, number 78 on the offense. Penalty five yards. Remain third down. Sean Rouser, one of the veterans, fifth year senior out of Atlanta. Yeah, but like I said before, these procedural, these pre-snap penalties, these are the ones as a coach that absolutely drive you crazy. And again, Avern Alexander went out of this game, a dislocated ankle, and they've had to shift things around. After trying to step up in the pocket, just slings one down, knocked down, no flag, good defense that time, and can this guy cover or what? Well, we called his name last year a bunch of times, and uh, boy, he's flexing his muscles early on we we know how effective he is rushing the passer and blitzing and in the running game but uh shows off some boy some athleticism being that far down the field and timing that play up perfectly doesn't wrap his hand around that's a great play by the uh, senior linebacker johnny baldwin baldwin against covering a speed demon and jared morrow back there great coverage Take a big bulldog bounce and hits it to 22. Man, it's going to bounce for days. They'll get great field position. Tim Errett, the new punter this year, who supplanted Micah Stripe so far in camp. And Errett out of Port Charlotte, Florida, the junior Florida Atlantic transfer. Tried that angle punt, and uh, that's going to be about that's going to end up about an eight yarder. Yeah. That hand stands up where it is right now. Well, he's got a ways to go now to. Uh, improve that average because that was going to hurt. 
as it hit it to 22, and I mean, took a big time Four. bounce. Have an the illegal field. formation on the kicking team. The five yard penalty will be awarded from the end of the kick, first down. I think that eight yard net just went to about three. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Tigers stall out again. They've been unable to get it into the end zone. They've had some good drives. They've had trouble running the football tonight. They've been able to expose uh, the Bulldogs in the passing game, but Johnny Baldwin, that great linebacker, All-American candidate, able to stop a big third down pass play to Jarrett Morrow, and the Bulldogs will take back over with Kelsey Luke at the helm out of Phoenix City, Alabama, the junior. They line up in the eye. And Luke will get it here to some fancy footwork by Tamar Scott. Scott's another good one. And last year, Tamar had uh, two 100-yard games, rushed for 557 yards, four touchdowns. And you may recall, last year's game, Kelsey and Nick Luke were not getting it done. Coach Jones went to Harold Dorman, a freshman quarterback, and went to Tamar Scott. And they got the Bulldogs ignited and, and got them on the board. They, turned, they, they turned the tempo of that game. Tamar Scott, a uh, very effective runner as well. They took five on the first down play. Here he will just find a little daylight and then try to fight for that yard marker. He's going to be up close to the first down, just short. That's two plays in a row. They pulled a guard. And uh, I think that's something that a team that he's very comfortable with is he gets right in there on that hip and it's found him a cut and they put him in a great position here. Third and uh, very, very short one. Tamar Scott, senior out of Demopolis, Alabama. And they'll keep it on the ground to Scott. Looks like he had some daylight at first. And he should get the first down here right at midfield. Yeah, I believe he's got to run off that right side. Uh, behind Christian Smith and uh, Thomas Sanders. This big, humongous Bulldog offensive line averaging 6'3 and about 315 pounds. Tigers have had a couple of injuries tonight. Avern Alexander went out, dislocated ankle, and Maurice Davis starting a defensive end tonight. Looks like he hobbled off on an ankle a little bit earlier. First down just across midfield into Tiger territory. Tied up at six apiece. We kick down to 8.35 now to go before halftime with the Battle of the Bands coming up. Luke all day to throw. He's going to air this one out, and it's going to fall incomplete. A little separation there. He's just getting past Rodgers was Emmanuel Edwards, but that one falls incomplete. Yeah, we've got another penalty here. I believe we're going to have a rough in the passer on uh, Tennessee State. Well, when you see a guy holding his hands up like Almonte Duncan did there, you know it's probably going to come his way as the officials confer. Mitchell had gotten behind the defense, but Kelsey put a little too much air under it. Should have laid it out just a little further for him, but the opportunity was there for a big play. Have two penalties on the play. Roughing the passer, number 99 on the defense. Ineligible receiver downfield on, on the offense. The penalty's offset with replay first down. Now the Tigers get another break. Boy, they've caught a lot of breaks. They have caught a lot of breaks. You don't want to use them all up here in this first half, but they have caught some breaks tonight. Coach Webster not happy. And we'll see the play here. He had all day to throw just as he let it go. Another couple of steps, and Almonte Duncan got him. And Edwards had a little separation on Dominique, but again, the uh, little too much air under, as you called it. So we'll just replay everything. First no. down and 10 again. They go back to the ground game. Give to the fullback McCants there on the uh, dive play up the middle. Nice run. So Kevin McCants gets his first carry tonight. The thing that makes it so hard when you go no huddle is you have to leave your base personnel out there. We see A&M. We see him going from three wides. We see him going to four wides. We see him going back to a two back. Tennessee State. It, it renders you ineffective to be able to uh, substitute defensively for matchups. So you end up with a linebacker out here in the slot like you see Tennessee State with right now. Second and seven, a lot of time to throw. Has his man open, it's caught inside the 15. There's Kevin Francis again. 
He's a, just another guy that, that gets open. That's all you can say about you know, him. That's exactly what I'm talking about is those matchups like that. You, you get a slot guy on the safety, you get a slot guy on a linebacker, and then you, you have a miscommunication in coverage, and you don't have the ability to, ability to uh, recover. Francis not listed as a starter tonight. We knew he would be in there and uh, and would be a weapon, would be a target. Kelsey Luke has a good chemistry with this guy. Well, he's made himself very well known here. And a big first down reception there. And a draw play, shaking off one tackler. And still looking for daylight, still on his feet. Hey, Mark Scott, here comes a flag in late. He would not go down, but he finally did. It's just the blue shirts converge. Carl Buford got in there on him and looked like he was about to make an excellent play. Missed him, got up, had a chance at him again, then missed him for the second time. The officials talking about it again. That flag came in right at the end of the play. Flags were a big, uh, played a big role in this game a year ago. It almost gave the Tigers a chance to win the ball game. Personal foul penalty. There were face masks at one point in the game. There was like three consecutive face mask penalties on the Bulldogs last year. And the Tigers were, were driving to go in to tie the game up when Antonio Nelson picked it off and went 100 yards Have an illegal block in the back, number 64 on the offense. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. First down. It's Jeffrey Johnson, the left guard, with the illegal block in the back. Looks like he came in late trying to clean that power up a little bit and might have uh, caught a big blue defender illegally there in the back. The Tigers get a little breathing room defensively. That backs him up. The first and 20 from the 24. Spreading out. Play that burned this Tiger defense a year ago. They've done a, a decent job of contain this year with it as Luke gets to the outside. I think they've done a very good job with it so far. Obviously, that's something they've worked very hard on, but uh, maintaining that contain was uh, something that really, really hurt them last year, and uh, they're very conscious of it. He picks up a couple of yards there, but what you never want to do is you never want to let him get that corner clean. Yeah, and they did repeatedly last year, especially Dorman, the young man that ignited their offense and played a big role in the A&M win here one year ago. Second down and 17 again, Luke. And this time he has all kinds of room to run as he works his way up near the five yard line, near that first down marker. So that big 10 yard penalty, the Bulldogs have been able to fight right back as they march it in the red zone here. Well, we just talked about this. And they do it. A player going, look, what does he do right there? He gets the end the bite, the peak inside, and uh, he turns that corner. And that's, that's a cardinal sin. Uh, Aaron Morris right there got caught peeking, but uh, the fate got him. But you give that corner to Kelsey Luke, and boy, it's really going to hurt you. And they have gone from a second and 17. Now they're in a very, very manageable third and three. Third and three on the Tigers, seven. They are spread out everywhere. Again, Luke could do a little quarterback draw here. Takes a couple steps and just rifles one in there incomplete. You know, Barry, they went right back to that same play they scored on earlier with the trips to the left and trying to isolate <clears throat> on the backside with Thomas Harris. Yep, you're right. Aaron Strong matched up with Harris. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have to come a little better than that against a uh, senior and an uh, outstanding performer like Aaron Harris. He was all over that. Need to show him a little bit of a different look if they want to score again. <laughs> And Jeremy Lycia gets another one blocked. As Lycia tonight, instead of Kyler, is handling their extra points. And Lycia had the extra point blocked a moment ago, and here he gets the field goal block. Let's try to take a look at what the problem he's having here. Two plays in a row, it's the same guy off that left wing. Yep. Dominic Rogers. He's had two blocks tonight. He blocked the extra point and blocks the field goal attempt here. Rodgers had a punt block a year ago. We'll take another look at Dominic Rodgers. I mean, that's four points he's personally kept off the board. That kick was really low. Yeah. I, I, he didn't even have a chance. I mean, it looked like he hit it about halfway up the ball. He didn't there. even have a chance. That looked like my golf swing. I right started there, to there. say the same thing. <laughs> Not yours, mine. <laughs> 
but young special teams players. The Tigers last year went with freshmen, and they uh, paid off this year. Lycia is a freshman out of Ventura, California, and then Kyler. So they've got young, inexperienced kickers, and we've seen two important, an extra point block and a field goal block after a great drive by A&M. The Tigers keep this game at 6-6, to 5.45 to go as they come back on offense here with Javaris Williams. So Dominique Rogers tonight, two big blocks coming off the edge. Rogers, 6'2", 170, the junior out of Bradenton, Florida, an outstanding athlete. Tigers used him late in the year last year with so many injuries. They lined him up at receiver, and he is their shutdown corner as well. Second and five, Williams picks up five on first down out of the eye of the Tigers. And he is picking up the first down, spinning off tackles, still on his feet, carrying the pile all the way across to about the 27, Javaris Williams. That's the Javaris Williams we've been looking for right there. That, that is the guy that set the uh, single season freshman record last year. Good job inside by the big senior center. Cecil Newton really moving the pile there, and Javaris Williams getting his pass north and south. That's what he does best. And I was talking to Coach James West before the game, asking him a little bit about what was going on with that situation, and he basically said we had high expectations for Javaris Williams. He's an outstanding player, and he hasn't been living up to those expectations, but uh, he, he's really coming out and trying to prove himself tonight. And he's finding some running room up the gut. Is Williams. The success the Tigers had last year was on offense was really that guy right there. Just the kind of erratic play at quarterback. Four different starters during the year, and Williams was the only consistent force that the Tigers had, and everybody knew it, and everybody game-planned against him, and he still gets nearly 900 yards rushing. Yeah, their passing game was uh, not near the level they're hoping it's going to be at this year with Antonio Heffern pulling the trigger. Second and five, so Williams picking up big chunks on each carry. Little pitch play here. And he was just not going down. And he was getting hit uh, behind the line of scrimmage earlier in this game. And this time he takes the initial hit and it just he just picked up that second, that second little drive here. That second effort kicking in for Williams. Offensive line doing a much better job. You see Damian Pitts getting some push there. And those are the kind of runs right now. That didn't look like much. That was about a two-yard run. But if this offensive line keeps grinding and Williams keeps pounding the ball, he'll break one of those for the night's over. Third and one. Hefner goes right back to Williams, and Williams breaking more tackles up near midfield. And they are riding the young man now, the sophomore out of Richmond, Texas. And he is as good as advertised. And, you know, you were talking about it with Coach Webster earlier. So many new players came in this year, and, and young guys had to play last year. He did not want a lot of the players to think they had their position, that it was sewed up. Everything's wide open. Yeah, so that's, many very, that's very important. That is very important. You see that in professional football, and you see it trickle down to this level. Competition is what drives young men to get better, and uh, complacency is what causes teams to have bad seasons, and that was the thing that Coach Webster definitely did not want anybody to feel like they were going to start again because of what they did last year. And we have yet to see tonight. Cut it inside and breaks it back outside. There's Maurice Young, who's really running well. He started the game tonight. Well, we haven't seen their change of pace guy, this heralded freshman, Terrence Wright, out of Houston. You talk about a guy that's looked good in camp and is a... He's quick. Yeah. <laughs> He's really quick. And Coach Kice, the new offensive coordinator, is going to work that guy into some packages this year as the season progresses. Because he is a game-breaking back with just blazing speed and just had great numbers in high school in Texas. Tigers really winning the battle up front. Here comes the flag in late as Hefner gets hit back at the 50 after the handoff. That was so unnecessary, so unnecessary to hit the quarterback on the uh, on the uh, bootleg fake, and that's gonna that's gonna cost him 15 yards for a uh, a really really dumb penalty by uh, Chris Trailer. Yeah, Trailer, he is a good one. First team preseason all swag see him coming out of the game. That's the kind of stuff that Anthony Jones just will not accept. He coaches these guys to be very aggressive, particularly on defense, but that was dumb. The personal foul, number 58 on the defense. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, you saw Coach Jones. You could read his lips. He says, what are you doing? 
Now that wasn't it. We missed on a replay. What happened is, is, is after Hefner handed the ball off, he came back out on a naked bootleg fake like you see him do every play and trailer absolutely decked him. There was no way he could have thought he had the football. Well, and the officials let that one go. That was Lockhart <laughs> just slapped. Nope. Can, you, can you call two personal fouls <laughs> on one play? 2.15 to go as that clock ticks down. Tigers been keeping it on the ground. And they do again to Maurice Young. And he just explodes up inside the 15. And the Tiger running game is picking up steam and eating up chunks of yardage, trying to take the lead here before the half. Yeah, this offensive line, minus their big <clears throat> left tackle, Avery Alexander, who got hurt earlier, is really starting to assert itself. And you see the stretch play. And this was, this was a play we really didn't see earlier when Tennessee State was really struggling. Uh, against that AM pressure, but now as this young as this line starts to get into a rhythm, uh, the stretch play is something that they keep going back to over and over. First and ten at the 15 of the Bulldogs in a 6-6 tie. And again, it's Maurice Young as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Here comes another flag in right at the end of the play. Stops the clock with 146 to go. As the bands start getting tuned up here. After standing in there with the officials listening in. I think for the most part, as we'll hear the call, they're going to pick it up. No foul on the play. I think for the most part tonight, uh, TSU was going to come out throwing the ball. They've done that. They inability to run early on, but now they've started running the ball. And you just never know what they might do. They're doing a great job keeping it on the ground, but we know Hector can throw it. Have pretty much have, have gotten it all the way down this field, primarily running the football. And you, uh, as they try to get this clock wound down, a minute and a half left in this first half, you you want to leave as little time as possible on that clock for and I think that's got to be playing into the strategy of James Weston. Little play action here. Hefner is going to throw back across the middle, wide open for the touchdown. The tight end, Eddie Woods. And the Tigers go to the air on play action. The Bulldogs fit, and the big tight end makes it a 12-6 ball game. Yeah, you talked about this guy earlier. You talked about how much Fred Kais liked him. You talked about his versatility, being a good blocker, but big soft hand by uh, Eddie Woods. And saw a lot of that last year, and we want to see more Eddie Woods getting in the end zone. Touchdown, big blue Tigers. Eddie Woods. Graham listed as a starter tonight, but Woods who caught just four balls a year ago, but he's in on so many great blocks as a glue kind of guy, and the extra point is up, and it is good. Nice drive by Tennessee State, and a way to take advantage of an opportunity, that missed field goal. And uh, they've caught a couple breaks in this game, but you see Antonio Hefner, you just see the poise in the leadership. You see him overcoming penalties, you see him overcoming the injury earlier, and uh, just the whole swagger and feel to the Tennessee State team feels different to me already. So Hefner does get those Tigers into the end zone. They had been knocking on the door, and they settled for two field goals, but that was a great drive as they established a line of scrimmage against one of the better defenses in 1AA football. That was Eric Benson who's hit the two field goals tonight. We see the scoring drive. And they took that basically the length of the field. Tennessee State's defense has uh, really, really done a job so far in this game. Sort of a sort of a bend and not break. You haven't seen them give up any many big plays, but offensively, I think, is, is the big difference in this team so far. We've only seen one half of football in their season so far, but we haven't. We've seen that one turnover, but but uh, Tennessee State just looks so much poised, and it just, you cannot, you can't measure how much having an experience and a poise and a confident quarterback does. It trickles down throughout, not only the offense, it trickles down throughout the whole team. And this team just feels differently. Feels like they, uh, you know, they come out and they feel like they just have more confidence than they did before. And this guy, Coach Kais, uh, the offensive coordinator, the new coordinator, came over from Hampton. He's been at Tennessee State before, but he called Hefner a sponge. I mean, and every time I've been in the football offices, I have seen Antonio Hefner in there with Coach Kais working on that offense, looking at the board. Here's Scott as he just bangs the field there. He, he thought he could have done a little more there if he would have been able to break that one tackle and Tamar Scott 
On the return is Eric doing the uh, kickoff duties tonight for the Tigers. But 106 to go. Yeah, be anxious to see if uh, the Bulldogs come out here and try to move the ball or if they content to go in just down by seven points at the half. Tigers had a 7-3 lead in this game at the half a year ago. Ended up losing it 27-14 as Antonio Nelson had a 100-yard interception return on the last play of the game as the Tigers were marching in to tie it up. Here, Luke keeps it on the ground. Not much happening for him there. And the clock will continue to move with uh, now 40 seconds to go before halftime. A lot going on at halftime, so don't you dare move. I guarantee you no one will budge in this stadium <laughs> as the Battle of the Bands is coming up. The marching maroon and white under the direction of Dr. Arthur Wesley and the aristocrat of bands, TSU's world-renowned band under the direction of Ed Graves. We'll get to see both performances coming up at the half and sit back and enjoy a treat. It's coming up in 15 seconds. That could be this final play. And Padding some stats here as the middle of the field just parted, and Scott gets a great run and a first down. You know, he will pad his stats with that run, but he has had an outstanding first down, uh, first half. Has been uh, significantly more effective than uh, Nick Luke running the football, and I would I would predict that we'd see a lot more of Tamar Scott in the second half. You know, that, that happened a year ago. We kept talking about it, but and we were anxious to see. I remember just looking at the tape this week as the second half started. We wanted to see who would come back at quarterback and at tailback. Coach Jones went back with the veterans, the Luke brothers. They played better in the second half after kind of watching the the understudies outplay them in that first half, and and they really settled in and played better in the second half, and eventually they pulled the game out. There's Anthony well, Jones, and you know we talked about what he's been able to do down there already two times he's won the eastern division of the of the swack and this is a guy you know it's it's a luxury to have when you have such a good coach you know people are going to come after him and he's done a great job down there and i'm sure name will get bandied around as uh, as other jobs open got a great background played at wichita state played in the nfl looks like he could still play today to be yeah, quite honest yeah he does Five seconds to go. Let's see what the Bulldogs try here after their timeout. Run a little draw play. And there is Luke, Nick Luke, giving Scott a breather here. And that's the final play of the first half as he gets, gets it across to the 45. And we have reached halftime. 13 to 6. The Tigers with the lead. They get a couple of field goals from Eric Benson. And then a touchdown pass, Antonio Hefner, a 16-yard strike to his tight end, Eddie Woods. Kelsey Luke had a 14-yard TD to Thomas Harris. The PAT has been blocked tonight, and also a field goal block. Dominic Rogers blocked both of them for the Tigers. And we are at 13-6 to six here at the break. As you see, the aristocrat of bands, they're going to get in position. The, the uh, marching maroon and white, they're going to be up first for Alabama A&M. We're going to hear extended uh, performances of both of those bands coming up here at the half and all kinds of other halftime activities as well will be coming up here at the break we'll look at the first half highlights and some stats and might even pass along some scores from around the country and I know Bubba Miller very excited about one score from Rocky Top <laughs> <laughs> the former UT lineman here with me tonight Bubba Miller and the revolves are looking good here tonight we're gonna go down to the field now to Gussie Fuller I'm joined with Coach Jones. Coach Jones, it's great to have you again here this year. Is it important for you all to continue to be part of the John Merritt Classic? Yes, it is. I think it's a, I think it's a great opportunity to get a chance to play in a great venue against a very good team uh, that's not far from you. So, and, and it helps with tradition. So, um, I'm happy we're here. Okay, it's great to have you here, Coach Jones. What can we expect from your team in the second half? What do you need to say in the locker room? to get those guys to continue to stay in the contest? Well, I think we need to cut down on some of the mistakes we made, and if we can do that and take care of the football, and uh, once we get down to this red area, put the ball in the end zone, um, then we'll be much better off. All right, thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you, Barry. All right, Gussie, thanks. 13 to six, Tigers with the lead here at halftime. We are at the eighth annual John Merritt Classic. Stay tuned, we've got the Battle of the Bands coming up next, so don't move. Come on back with us here on CSS. Tennessee State. 
13 to 6 here at halftime. We are at the 8th Annual John Merrick Classic. We are at LP Field here in downtown Nashville getting set for our Battle of the Bands. A big performance coming up here at halftime. And Gussie Fuller is going to have some great interviews as well. But I've got some guys with me here. We've got Dave Harvey and Keith Belton from LP. And you, you may be wondering, you know, what is this LP Field? We've heard about it. It's the Titan Stadium. And, of course, the Tigers play here. Dave, tell me about... Uh, your company, okay. what you are, and tell us a little bit about LP. Okay, so LP, we're a building products company. We make products that you build your houses out of. And so our products make your house strong, they make your floors quiet, they make the outside of your house look great, including your decks. So that's that's what we do, that's what we make. And you've seen LP really plastered all around the stadium. Keith's a marketing guy, much like myself, and it's got to be the exposure for your company here. Of course, you're headquartered in Nashville, but the exposure, getting involved with the NFL, getting involved with college football has got to be great. Yeah, no, it's been great for us from a standpoint of our products. Um, are well known to builders, but getting our name out to consumers as well. This has been great partnership with the uh, Tennessee Titans as well as with Tennessee State is a benefit for us. Dave, what about it? I know we met just a couple of weeks ago, and... Uh, you're a college football fan as well. You're getting a chance tonight to probably see this uh, TSU band for the first time. Right. That's the first time I've been to a, actually live to a Tennessee State game. I'd heard about them before. I've seen them on TV. But just having recently moved to the area, this is the first opportunity to see it. Glad they're ahead. And the, uh, the bands are obviously going to be exciting. So we're looking forward to it. It will be great. And Keith, uh, of course, uh, from this area, and you're, you know this Tennessee State tradition as yes. well, and, and yes. really wanted to get a partnership going with the Tennessee yes. State and with LP. Yes. Um, as a national native, grew up going to these games, seeing uh, Coach Merritt, the Tiger Bells, and so forth, and being with LP now, partnership with Tennessee State Athletics is exciting. We're announcing this evening an opportunity at $100 a point to support Tennessee State Athletics and, uh, again, build a partnership between Tennessee State and LP. Well, I tell you, we're looking forward to it. It's so great to have you guys with us as we're looking at the marching maroon and white of Alabama A&M. Again, Dave Harvey, Keith Belt, thanks for spending some time with me here, and it's great to have our partnership with LP. Yes, thanks very much. All right, Dave, thank you. Thanks, Barry. All right, the marching maroon and white just behind me here as we take a look at those guys and... We're going to see the aristocrat of bands again coming up as well. So let's take a listen now to Alabama A&M's Marching Maroon and White. Halftime will continue here at the 8th Annual John Mary Classic. Stay with us. More of the exciting Battle of the Bands next. Crack of dawn for me. Oh, it was after midnight. At State Farm, you can now get a quote or buy current. Now the Tigers have a 13-6 lead here at halftime as Antonio Hefner hooked up with Eddie Woods to give the Tigers the lead here at the break. The marching maroon and white of Alabama A&M wrapping up their performance at this moment. 
The aristocrat of brands are on deck, ready to go. And at this time, we want to send it back down to the field, right in the middle of the action, Gussie Fuller. It is my pleasure to be joined by two distinguished people, the president of Tennessee State University, Dr. Melvin N., and his lovely wife, Dr. Marcy Johnson. President Johnson, it's good to see you again. Well, it's always good to see you as well. All right. Isn't, isn't this a fantastic evening? It's, fan it's electric down here. It's exciting, and we have a ball game. Yeah, absolutely, we have a ball game. I see we've got two outstanding teams out on this field of play. I think they came to play. They're prepared. And could you tell us how important the John Mary Classic is? Well, the John Mary Classic is extremely important because not only does it give us a chance to see and showcase two outstanding universities, but it also allows us to uh, memorize a great coach, John A. Merritt. And it also allows us to get into the fall season. We are so happy with what we've been able to accomplish, not only in preparation for the game, but also we've had our astronomer overseas to help to define this new world. Uh, Absolutely. I know Pl uh, Pluto has been devoted, but Tennessee State University is on the rise. That's okay. That's just another breaking frontier that Tennessee State is doing. It is good to see you, and good to see you, Dr. Marcy, and thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you. Let's enjoy the rest of the game. All right, back to you, Barry. All right, Gussie. Dr. Melvin and Johnson in his second year at Tennessee State. Saw a loss in this game a year ago, and he wants to get a win here tonight against the rivals from down in Huntsville, Alabama. Again, we see the performance here by the marching maroon and white. And the aristocrat of bands of Tennessee State, they are up next, and they are ready to go as well. These bands already in mid-season form. Thirteen to six here at the half as we're about to have the field change positions and the aristocrats are coming out but we're going to send it back down on the field now to Gussie Fuller. Okay, thank you so much. I have the privilege to be joined by three distinguished honorees of the 2006 John Merritt Classic. First we have Mrs. Ivanetta Davis. She is the widow of the former president, Dr. Walter S. Davis, who is responsible for bringing Coach John Merritt to Tennessee State. It's a pleasure to have you here, and how does it feel to be here to represent? Thank you. My son, Dr. Ida Davis, is here with me. Very nice. Dr. Davis, it's very nice to have you here with us as well. How does it feel to be part of the John Merritt Classic? Oh, it's wonderful. It's great uh, remembrances, and uh, remember when uh, Big John came to TSU in 1960. Uh, following a dismal year in football field. Wow, well, no more dismal after him. And I'm going to move over here to former president, Dr. Fred Humphreys. He served the university faithfully for 10 years. And John Merritt coached under you, correct, Dr. Humphreys? How does it feel for you to be back home? He, he did. And he was the most outstanding coach. He achieved his 200th victory. He was one of the winningest coaches in America. Had great football teams. My very first year as president, John Merritt football team led the nation, both Division 1A and 1AA, in the number of athletes recruited to go into pros. It was a wonderful time. We just hardly ever lost wow. when I was president. It was a great what? period of time in, in football at Florida a and I mean, at Tennessee State. Absolutely. Well, we know you have done great things across the board. And what an incredible stat about Coach John Merritt. No, he was a superior coach. Wow. And our final member of the 2006 honoree is Mr. Homer Wheaton, who has recently retired after 52 years 
of loyal service to the university. Mr. Wheaton, it's great to have you back. And tell us how you feel about being part of the John Mary Classic. It's a real pleasure for me to be a part of the John Mary Classic. You know, John and I go way back. We had such a fine relationship. Uh, I would do anything that John wanted me to do, and he would do anything that he could for me. And uh, I, I remember when I went down to Jackson, Mississippi, to talk uh, married into coming to Nashville, and I will never forget that. I think I, I really tipped up on the blind side of him. He was not expecting the kind of approach that I gave him. But everything worked out well, and it's been real good for everybody. Well, I tell you, we appreciate you getting him here, and we appreciate all of you administrators that had the opportunity to work with him, and it is a pleasure to be here with all of you all. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, back to you, Barry. Okay, Gussie, thank you very much. The great honorees of this year's 8th Annual John Mary Classic. At halftime, the TSU band playing on. The Tigers with a lead 13-6. Back with more after this on CSS. It is 13-6. The Tigers with the halftime lead at LP Field here in the 8th Annual John Merritt Classic. Barry Gresham and Bubba Miller in the press box. And uh, first half, Bubba, been a pretty good ball game. That's all you can say. Uh, both teams have come out and played pretty well. Uh, a lot of penalties, just like you would expect in the opening game for both of these teams. But uh, not a lot of turnovers and not an extremely sloppy amount of play so far in this game. Let's take a look at the highlights on that first half. The Tigers got things started at a 54-yard kickoff return, and Eric Benson ended up getting a 32-yard field goal to put him on top three to nothing. They get an interception, Bubba, and Benson boots another one in. He's two for two. Yeah, so far so good on the kicking game. That was an Achilles heel last year for the Big Blue. Coming right back, the Bulldogs. That's the play that worked from Luke over to, to Harris, the young freshman, and they get on the board. This is, this is really what's killed uh, A&M so far, is these two missed opportunities, four potential points that they could have had on the board on an extra point and a field goal that they've missed. And there's Hefner to Eddie Woods to give the Tigers that lead. Benson tacked on the point after attempt. We are at 13-6 to six here at the break. Here's our stats on that first half. First down's even. It's been a pretty balanced ball game so far. A&M uh, looking pretty good rushing the ball. Tamar Scott is, has played well. Turnovers for TSU, they got to love it. No turnovers that first half. They got the big interception. Well, those rushing stats were padded a little bit by uh, the final two plays of the uh, first half. Two big long runs by AM, but Tennessee State has, for the most part, held that AM Mercy game in check. 13 to 6 is our halftime score here, and we're going to go back down on the field now and rejoin Gussie Fuller. Thanks, Barry. I am joined by the most important Dr. Robert Jennings, the president of Alabama AM. Dr. Jennings, welcome to Music City. Thank you so very much for having me. Very well. Tell me, how important is the John Mary Classic to your city, to your school? Well, it's very important to us, this game in particular, because it's our first game. But we always want to be supportive of our fellow sister institutions. So this is quite important. All right. Well, it's good to have you. And I tell you what, you guys have a contest. Your team looks very well prepared. I think so. We've been practicing. We've been trying to get ready for this and we hope to take home a win. Okay, well, good luck to you, and we look forward to seeing you later. Thanks so much. Thanks again. Let's take a listen now to the TSU Aristocrat of Bands. at LP Field, downtown Nashville. We kick off the college football season tonight. We've got a good one. We thought we would have a good one. 13-6, the Tigers with the lead. 
here at the break. You know, they had the lead in this game a, a year ago, too, at halftime. 7-3, to three, a lower-scoring game as far as uh, combined points, but A&M uh, matched that intensity. They talked about it a year ago, and they came out in the second half and reestablished the Luke brothers and, and handed the Tigers their first-ever loss in this Classic. Yeah, Anthony Jones went in last, time, last year with his team in a very similar situation. Didn't play extremely well in the first half, but uh, they made some adjustments, particularly in that running game, like you said, and uh, Nick Luke came out and really, really caught fire in that second half. So... Uh, Two totally different teams, same scenario, but like I talked about earlier in that first half, I think the poise that Antonio Hefner has brought to this team and to this program uh, will hopefully help Tennessee State, if you're a big blue fan, come out and uh, respond a little bit better this year than they did last year. Both teams coming out, uh, extended halftime with our Battle of the Bands. And, uh, you know, what's, what's that like, Bubba, being in that locker room? You've been in some situations in some big games where you've had that long halftime, and you've got to really just rejuice and kind of recharge yourself. Well, the thing you don't want to do, you don't want to get cold. Uh, you sit around and you, you don't want to hear too much of what your coach has to say. I mean, there's always going to be correct corrections. There's always going to be adjustments. But... Uh, you want to get back on that field as soon as possible. So it is a little bit harder not knowing exactly when you're going to get back on the field. But, you know, TSU came out and warmed up. I noticed A&M didn't warm up. I would assume they did some kind of stretching or warming up uh, in their locker room. But that kind of helps you get the juice form. But you just don't want your muscles to get cold. And that's what the risk you run into when you do have a long halftime. Well, both of these teams are, are very familiar with this format. The Tigers... Coming up in two weeks, they'll be down in Memphis. And we say hello to all of our viewers in Memphis tonight watching this John Merritt Classic. But they'll be there for the Southern Heritage Classic and then play down in the Georgia Dome on the 30th of this month in the Atlanta Classic. Of course, Alabama A&M, they have their big game of the year at Legion Field, the Magic City Classic against their rivals, Alabama State. So these historic rivalries, these classic games are... I mean, the fans, everyone loves it. The bands get to compete. The players love to go head-to-head. -head, and it's it's kind of that Super Bowl-type atmosphere. And, you, and for TSU, you got to do it three times. You know, that, that's really hard. And, and, and I think that, you know, it's an advantage uh, for Tennessee State to be able to play in these games. But I think it kind of hurts them later on in the year because when you emotionally have to get up so many times to play in these classics with, with all the energy and electricity that people bring to these things you've got so many people coming in from out of town and all over the country so much focus put on that one game then you get into your conference schedule you know where you're playing against smaller crowds where you're playing against uh, a lot of times teams uh, with a little bit better competition then it's really hard to dig in that well and get it up again so uh Anxious to see how Tennessee State handles these classics this year because last year I really feel like uh, you know they didn't handle their conference schedule as well once they got out of these classics. And the Tigers all time here playing at what was then the Delphia Coliseum, then just the Coliseum, now LP Field, 20 and 13 all time. So not not that home field advantage they had, of course, on campus at Hale Stadium in the hole, and and it goes back to. You know, you talk about it a lot. The opponents really get jacked up to come in here and play in an NFL stadium. And, and the Tigers, they get used to the setting in here. But you'll have a lot of the OVC opponents come in, and it's their chance to play on the big stage. And the Tigers have not fared well here, losing five straight at home. James Webster tonight looking for his first home win. Tigers kicking off to the Bulldogs here. And uh, Tamar Scott, who had a very good first half, a couple of big runs late. Scott, uh, in that first half, finished uh, with 32 yards. You saw our stats a moment ago. They uh, netted 110 on the ground. He had a couple of big runs late. Kelsey Luke, quarterback, 28 yards in that first half. There's his passing numbers, 10 out of 14, 108 yards. He had the touchdown pass to Harris, and he had the pick as Aaron Strong stepped in front of a pass, which led to a Tiger field goal. And as we start the second half, 13-6 Tennessee State. The Bulldogs have had trouble in their kicking game tonight, their special teams. And there's that sprint out play. We talked about it, how well it worked a year ago. The Tigers had done a great job of handling to right at the end of the first half. Boy, he gets to that corner with some urgency. Uh, like you said, they did not do a great job. They did a good job with it the first half. Later on in the first half, didn't do as well. And they come out and they go right back to it. Alabama A&M does right out the shoot. You see James Webster 
He knows what to expect in this game against A&M. His first game ever as a head coach last year was this game and lost it. And I heard him talk to the team the other night. He's a bitter taste left in his mouth about this game. And here's a first down pickup for the Bulldogs. And uh, this is a game that he wants really, really bad. Well, this classic means a lot, and I think he, I don't think he knew that going into the game last year. I think he thought it was just another football game, but uh, I think he heard after that game how much, how important it was and how bad they want to win their home classic here. This is the only classic that they play at their home field. And you said it a year ago when it happened, when Nelson runs it back 100 yards, you anticipated he might, you know, just go down. That would have been the end of the game. But when he carried it on into the end zone, you knew that the Tigers would would remember that from well, he, last year. He definitely poured a little salt in that wound. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, could have ended the game a lot earlier there. But hey, kid had a chance to make a play. He made a play. Edwards gets a stop for the Tigers as Nick Luke in the first half, just 26 yards. He's uh, had five 100-yard games a year ago. Second team preseason all slack as this Bulldog team picked to win that Eastern Division again. Their stumbling block a year ago was Grambling. They were hammered by Grambling in both meetings a year ago in that second for the SWAC title. Boy, Grambling had that humongous quarterback last year. Remember that guy? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Good pass, too. Luke keeping it on the ground. Tigers kept it on the ground. And that closing drive in the first half, they went to the air to Eddie Woods for the touchdown, but they started winning the battle of the line of scrimmage, and I think Coach Jones wants to reestablish that line of scrimmage with his offense, and well, the, so far they're doing it. Well, they need to lean a little more heavily on that big okay. offensive line. Like we said at the start of the game, they had all five starters come back from last year. Chris Franklin, their center, the preseason All-American, and they're humongous humongous line so uh, Tennessee State doing a good job of getting penetration of pushing these guys back thus far in the game well they get a big stop there so now you're looking at a fourth down and one play at the 49 big play early to start this second half Luke pops up plenty of time on the play clock he barks out a signal and if the Tigers will jump here, it's fourth and one. And again, he'll rise up, look to the bench. Play clock, going to tick down. And it'll be the delay again. Wanted to see if the Tigers were a little eager and would jump and give them a gift first down right at midfield. I thought that was a little, uh, not sure what was going on there, going forward at midfield on fourth and, and a good one. That would have been risky to go forward. Fourth and the delay of the game, number nine on the offense. Penalty five yards, fourth down. Good discipline by Tennessee State staying in there. Uh, that would have been extremely risky to try to go for it right there at midfield, particularly when you're already down by one score. So early in the game. Tigers have Jarrett Morrow back to return. Rashawn Kyler, the freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. This uh, young punter and young kicker, especially Lycia, the freshman from Ventura, California, has had his extra point blocked and a big field goal opportunity blocked for A&M. It ended a uh, a long drive, and they got nothing out of it as Dominic Rogers has two blocks tonight. Here's a great punt. Morrow with a fair catch call for at the nine-yard line. And that'll lead us to a timeout on the field. 13-6, to six, Tigers are going to get a touch here to start the second half with the lead at the John Merritt Classic on CSS. Yeah, there's a look at Second Avenue here in uh, downtown Nashville. You get in a few honky tonks over there. Here's some great country music. Really music of all kind here in Music City, USA. And I go, go down to Trans Island here hear your blues too, man. You can hear some blues. In fact, the uh, Blues and Jazz Festival is going on on the riverfront this weekend here, part of the Labor Day celebration, along with the John Merritt Classic. Tigers really uh, established the line of scrimmage at the end of the first half to take the lead. They're going to come back. First play from scrimmage here in the second half. They'll give to Javaris Williams and Williams, uh, his numbers in that first half now, updated numbers with that carry, 11 carries, 62 yards. Again, he did not start tonight. Maurice Young got the start in the first series, and Young played really well, but you knew it was just a matter of time before the Tigers would go to their every down back, Javaris Williams, and ride him, and he has delivered. From the 11 now on a second down and eight play, Hefter will roll out to the right. He directs traffic and airmails this one. A little too tall for Stevens. 
Okay, they like that rollout. Hefner is very comfortable rolling out and uh, comfortable going to his right as well as to his left, where you don't really normally see a lot of quarterbacks being comfortable throwing the ball. You know, you're right on the money. You, you just see the, the poise. I mean, the way he's playing, he's playing, even though he's listed as just a sophomore, of course, he redshirted his first year at South Carolina. But this is a guy that uh, seems to be a veteran beyond his years. 7 of 14 here tonight, 110 yards in the touchdown to Eddie Woods. And just what the doctor ordered for some stability at the quarterback position for the Tigers. Now you've got to keep him healthy. Big third down play. He stands in that pocket here, sends this one down the field. And it is broken up, trying to get, get the ball to Mason. Wasn't able to step into that throw. He held it, held it, held it, and the pressure got to him a little bit. Steven Tucker, left corner, there with Mason. Not bad protection. It gave him enough time to get it open, but right when he wanted to release, it wasn't quite able to put everything he wanted into that throw. You know, much like the Tigers were aware of Harris, the freshman, it's kind of the mystery, the unknown. They knew what kind of talent he had. A&M had read all the press clippings about Mike Mason. They saw him in that kickoff return. They have been focused on him tonight as well. Eric will punt it and gets a nice bounce on this one. A very good bounce for the Tigers. It'll be down at the 32. Here comes the flag flying in at the end of this play. Boy, what we got now? Didn't look like it was going to be much of a punt. It was a wounded duck coming off his foot, but uh, he got enough back, he got enough spin on it to get it down and uh, kind of flip the field position for the big blue tight. Well, he got a bad break in the first half on a punt, but he got a fortunate one there. And the AM defense, they make a statement here to start the second half. Officials still talking about this one. Jeff Heilgier is going to give us the call here. Whoa. It's a biggie on uh, Tennessee State. The official talking it over with Christian Smith. Second team preseason all slack performer this year. They try to decide what they're going to do. TSU had five penalties in the first half, 34 yards. A couple of them were pretty timely penalties, and uh, here they are starting the uh, second half again with those penalties at, at just you know, inopportune times. Personal foul on the Tigers. Personal foul, number seven on the kicking team. The penalty is half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Replay for that fourth I'm half. trying to understand what, what took a dissertation to figure that one out. What yeah. was so tough about that one? It's Nikita Rutland, the senior out of Bradenton, Florida, getting a very tough penalty there. And a little more heat on Tim Errett making his debut as a Tiger tonight as the punter. He has uh, supplanted Micah Stripe so far, at least for the opener here. Eric, a junior, transferred in from Florida Atlantic. It's going to be quite a short field for the Bulldogs. Off a high punt here, taken at the 49. Making a few moves as the flag comes in, tripped up. Two flags come in on the play. As Frank Moore on the return and more penalty flags coming in. We hope that's not going to be the trend here throughout this entire second half. Boy, sure looking that way. A lot of laundry on the carpet so far. We've only played about five minutes. Got an illegal block in the back on that play. It's taking forever to get the change of possession. Illegal block in the back, number 16 on the receiving team. The penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Take a look back at some of the events that go on as part of the John Merritt Classic, the senior kickoff luncheon. There's an outstanding fashion show that takes place. Pep rally and parade last night. 
down through a historic Jefferson Street to the Bicentennial Mall with both bands involved and so much going on as part of the John Merritt Classic. We'd love to see you here with us next year. These two teams are going to go right back at it at LP Field, so get your tickets and be part of the Labor Day weekend in Nashville with this John Merritt Classic. Finally, the Bulldogs get the ball back, and Nick Luke keeping it on the ground. They had success a moment ago, but then their drive stalled. Second down. Haven't seen a lot of the tight ends uh, like we did early in the first half, and that was uh, a matchup that we thought that A&M would have an opportunity to exploit a little bit. Edwards and Harris split out. Hand off here. Kelsey to Nick Luke across the 40 of the Tigers for a first down. And Alabama A&M, they really want to lather up their big back now and ride him in the start of the second half. Well, that last stop was the Tigers number nine. Eric. A little bit of an inside trap there. Right guard Jeffrey Johnson pulling. First half. Creating a little bit of a running room for Nick Luke. The thing that's been interesting is to watch the different style of plays they like to run with a different style back. Nick Luke's a good inside runner, likes running the trap, likes running in this direction. Makes a great cut here. Still on his feet down near the 20 yard line. And he, much like Javaris, gets better and better with more carries. He just he tends to wear on that defense. And finally, this offensive line, that big offensive line, is starting to throw some people around. Barry, are we watching last year's uh, game again? I mean, remember the second yeah. half last year, Nick Luke really was cold the first half, came out of the second half out of the gate running the ball extremely well, picked up a lot of yards, and it, it looks like uh, he's, a, he's a second half kind of back. Yeah. Against A in this package, first and 10 from the 20 are the Bulldogs. They trail in this one 13 to six, and we're in the second half. And they go back this time to Scott. Tamar Scott in the first half, averaged about eight yards a carry. A couple of big runs late in that last series as they were running out the clock. But it's pretty obvious Anthony Jones has come out and challenged this offensive line. We need you guys to take over. And it's a veteran group up front with all five of those starters returning. And so far, they are asserting themselves in the early part of the second half. Rolling out, Luke wanted to cut inside. Now he thinks better of it. He'll spread it out to the outside and hit for that first down marker he's a good runner he is a very good runner he gets to that edge in a hurry and the, the thing that's so amazing about that play is that he really hasn't had a run pass option so far it's been pretty much design runs you see right there tamar scott nice block and uh gets up and blocks him again but he hasn't really had the option to throw it yet it's always going to run, so I would look for them at some point to give him a run pass option on that sprint out. Third down and two in the red zone again of the Bulldogs. The 12 of the Tigers kind of dropping those pads and fighting through a hole to get it across the 10 for the first down. Big Lamar Scott again. Big Christian Smith in there getting some movement on the right side of that offensive line. 6'1", 310-pound junior. He's played a lot of football with Coach Anthony Jones. He's the guy they really like to run behind. Well, those two guards in the center. A lot of accolades coming their way in the preseason in the SWAC, and really throughout the country in 1AA football, they have got a good offensive line. And a low snap, a shot down the loop, and he's still on his feet, and he's finally brought down at about the seven yard line, Dominic Rogers in on the stop. There's a guy that's had a good game for him so far. Dominic Rogers has uh, been all over the field. Two blocks tonight for Dominic. He blocked an extra point and blocked a big field goal attempt by the young freshman Lycia out of California. Coming off the edge, he's had two blocks and had a couple of big hits tonight too. Tennessee State trying to keep them out of this end zone, trying to hold on to this lead. And draw play to Nick Luke. 
and he gets it right down close to that goal line. His brother Kelsey put up the hands, thought for sure he was going to get in on that draw play. Well, I think it'd be it'd be a heck of a statement if Tennessee State could keep them out of the end zone right here with the problems that A&M's had in that kicking game so far in this game. Uh, I think Coach Anthony Jones would probably, this is four down territory without a doubt. Third and goal at the one. Kelsey Luke under center for the Bulldog. Gives to the second man through. It's Nick Luke, and he'll dive across, get into the end zone. For the Bulldogs, they keep it on the ground. They get it into the end zone. They cut it to a one-point game. Off the right side of that offensive line again, right behind those big guys, Christian Smith, James Sanders, and their preseason All-American center, Chris Franklin. Stopped initially, but keeps those legs driving, gets in. For the touchdown. Well, they're going to go back to the youngster to try to get an extra point down to tie it up. This time, Lycia gets it up there, and he bangs it through. So the young man kicks one through. We're tied up at 13 at the John Merrick Classic. Come on back. The Tigers will get it next on CSS. And Nick Luke's one-yard touchdown run. And then Lycia, the young freshman, out of the hold of another freshman, Kyler, who does their kickoff and punting duties. Nine plays, 56 yards. He up nearly four minutes of clock time for a loose touchdown run. And now Kyler, another youngster, freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, is going to kick it off with Mike Mason and Jarrett Morrow back deep. And it will be Morrow taking it at the eight. Morrow, he'll cut it back up with his speed. And Falls forward to the 27. Two very dangerous return men when you have Mason and Morrow back there together. I doubt very seriously they're going to kick to uh, Mason again. And I think that's a theme you can look for throughout the season is uh, people are going to try to keep that ball away from Mason. So since he's going to have to try to find ways to move him around on that, on that uh, kickoff return because teams are not going to kick deep. Anymore. Well, he opened the game with a 54-yard kick return. His first play as a TSU Tiger. Outstanding kick returner at the University of North Carolina. Had a 96-yard touchdown on a uh, kickoff return against Maryland. And what a weapon he is. Clocked at 4-2, outstanding speed. And Tiger just need to get the ball in his hands more. The guy that they love to give it to him is uh, Javaris Williams. You want to keep it in his hands because he just carries white shirts with him all the way across to the 40. And Williams just is getting better and better as this game goes on as the Tigers move the chains on first down. That, that was a great cutback by Javaris Williams. Starts off to his right, saw a little bit of daylight to his left, and that's uh, people do not understand it, how important it is on the backside. Just because the play's going one direction doesn't mean the guys on the backside of that play don't have to do a good job. Tigers in a spread formation. Hefner will give it here to Williams. He'll fight for plus yardage. About the 44. Made Justin Harper move and miss a tackle there in the backfield. And that's that's what you want to do. You don't want to see those defensive linemen in the backfield, but Javaris Williams has caught a rhythm here in the Second last down. part of this third quarter. Second and six. Throw it out there to Mason. He'll get a touch here. Look at him put the speed on. He's tripped up. He goes across to the 44 of the Bulldogs. Man, it doesn't take long when he catches it. He's gone. Well, those white lines disappear in a hurry when uh, he's got the football. Look at that. He catches it, and it's it, it's north and south, and it's right now. Nice tackle, but he blew right by Johnny Baldwin. He put it in another gear. Three catches for Mason tonight out of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Got to find more ways to get him the football. Oh, without a doubt. What a weapon. Weapons the Tigers did not have on offense a year ago. Hefner had this one batted down. Take the same big guy, Dominique Cummings, at 6'2". Got a hand on one in the first half, and he swats this one down as well. Trying to get the ball back to Mason again out there in the flat. They must have hurt us down there, Barry. Leaps up, gets a piece of it while being engaged in a block. Second down and 10 from the 45 of the Bulldogs in a deadlock 13-13 tie, 4.35 to go in this third quarter. Hefner will keep it. 
still on his feet, almost went down, and he's still lunging forward, trying to get everything he could on this second down play. What a poison effort this young man is amazing to me. A lot of times you see when a quarterback misses a handoff, you see him just kind of roll up in the fetal position, but hey, this kid wants to win. He feels like he's got a lot to prove and feel like he's got new life being able to come to Nashville and play uh, at Tennessee State. And you see his confidence starting to rub off on a lot of other people on this offensive ball team. Through for over 1,400 yards as a junior in high school, 1,200 yards as a senior. One of the highly recruited players out of the state of Tennessee a couple of years ago. They come after him. He throws it. It's caught complete to Mason, and Mason gets out of bounds at the 32. Moves him around a little bit. You see him in the slot. You see him lined up wide on both sides of the field. Uh, you can't get him the ball on the kickoff because nobody will kick to him. So, hey, get him the ball however you can. And this is it. Tennessee State has made a concerted effort on this drive to try to get the ball to Mike Mason. Well, they've been riding Javaris Williams. He softened up that defense. Now they go back to the passing game that they started with, and they're finding their brand-new weapon in Mason. First and 10 from the 33 of the Bulldogs. 13-13 ball game, 3.45 to go. We're in the third quarter, just as we expected. This has been a great one. Two teams that are very evenly matched and a lot on the line in game one of the year. And then Williams gets the carry here. Avery Molin at that uh, Mike linebacker position gets the stop. Both teams are going to open up conference play next Saturday. The Tigers open up the OVC play here against Murray State, and it's a revenge match for the Bulldogs. They will get grambling at Lewis Cruz Stadium down in Huntsville next Saturday. Tell me that won't be a big one. Yeah, I'm glad to see Tennessee State playing some of their conference games a little more early in the year. On a second and seven play, bouncing around still on his feet. Williams stacked up this time by the Bulldogs. Short of the uh, first down yard it needed. Same type situation. He starts off to his right, cuts back to his left. And that's where the experience is on the right side of that line. Good job building a wall and creating a little bit of space for him on that right side to cut back to and putting him again in a manageable third down situation. 33 from the 26. And the Tigers keep moving the chains. And they will falling forward. To get the first down yardage is Maurice Young. So he gives uh, Williams a break here and picks it up. Coach Kais, uh, the new offensive coordinator, said that uh, Young would be his third down back. And we see it here. Nice cut by Maurice Young, finding a little bit of seam up in the middle. And that, that Tennessee State offensive line, I'm really impressed with what they've come out and done in the second half. Both offensive lines, I think, have been very assertive. Uh, in the second half of this ball game. First and 10 from the 22 of a and The Tigers trying to retake the lead after the Bulldogs have scored to tie it up. Little play action. They come out to help the two guys. He leaves one, and he just throws it up, and it's out of bounds. He gets rid of that one. He almost walked right into one, and very fortunate he didn't get popped bigger than he did that Boy, time. He's, he's kind of wiry, isn't he? No one get, ever gets a clean shot on them. Even from the back side, he didn't even see him. Uh, he was able to feel that pressure and at least get away from it. If he had taken a sack right there, that would have all but taken him out of field goal range. But hey, he's an elusive fella. He uh, found a way to get rid of the football. Hefter's taking a, a few more hits tonight than I'm sure Coach Webster would like to see. But he stands in there. Second and 10, from the 22. Coming in motion, Gerald Morrow. And Hefter will keep it, they take the reverse. Hefter's still on his feet, and he'll throw it safely here. Underneath, just found Young open. To get something really out of nothing, because very fortunate that time. It takes so much time for those plays to, to develop, and it, when you've got guys that just flat come after you like the Bulldogs, you don't have much time. Yeah, it looked like he might have lost a little bit of yards on that play, but I, I tell you the thing he did, he didn't throw it down the field, that busted up screen. Knowing he had some linemen down the field, he threw the ball behind the line of scrimmage and allowed them to at least not have a tremendous big gain, big loss that uh, they would have had otherwise.
Third down and nine now from the 21. A big third down play for the Tigers, and they're going to burn a timeout to talk about it. We'll take a timeout with them. 59 seconds to go in the third. Tied up at 13, the Tigers on the march here on CSS. James Webster looking on after the timeout. He knows how crucial this play is. Third down and nine play at the 21 of the Bulldogs in a deadlock 13-13 ball game. We'll see what the Tigers will run here. Hefter in the shotgun. Hefter looking to his right and he'll look back across the middle. Completes it to Mason. Mason falling forward up to the five-yard line. The Tigers pick up a big time first down on that big third and long play. You would expect that it would take a little bit of time for these guys to uh, develop a chemistry, and it's taken them every, every bit of about two quarters for uh, Hefner to figure out where Mason is on every big play they need to convert. Uh, you, you, you said it a moment ago. They're moving him around. Want to get Mason some touches. You have a weapon like that, you've got to take advantage of him. And the Tigers are finding him on this series, and that time they find him to keep this drive alive, an opportunity to get it into the end zone. See, they get down here close in the big power package. They bring in Eugene Banks, number 65, the big guard on the left side, and boy, he clears it out. On a first and goal at the sixth play. Tough running in there, and you mentioned Banks, who we thought would not play tonight. He has not practiced since having his ankle rolled up on, and he was in uh, pretty bad shape, was out there earlier this week, and he was just kind of barely getting around in a boot, but he's out there tonight. Boy, he, he sure can push about 6'6", six, six, about 380 pounds. And uh, you, you certainly don't want to line up across from him and, <laughs> and hope he's not blocking you. Definitely the jumbo package. Tigers knocking on the door here. As we play three quarters of football, we're deadlocked at 13 at the John Merritt Classic. Fourth quarter is next on CSS. Now look at the Bell South building, also called the Batman building here in downtown Nashville. And Tigers on a big play here. Second and goal from the five. Hefner looking to throw. He throws it out there and he's caught and getting across the end zone. In there for the touchdown for the Tigers. Great effort by Brandon Jones to catch that ball. And uh, Brandon Jackson, excuse me, to catch that ball with his hands and get in. That's the new fullback. Tank, they call him. Brandon boy, Jackson. Boy, does that hurt. Oh, flag on the play. As Hefter rolls out from UTEP, the transfer, Jackson, but a flag. Holding number 78 on the offense. The penalty is 10 yards, defeat second down. And a big holding penalty. Will negate that touchdown as Rouser gets it. And Coach Webster, oh, you can see the angst on his face, the pain. He had a touchdown taken off the board with that holding penalty with the Tigers. Need to regroup here, second and 15. Second and goal from the 15. Trying to retake the lead in this ballgame. Hefter under center. And Hefter tried to slip it to the fullback. Jackson, who caught the touchdown pass, and he couldn't get out of his tracks. The Bulldogs were all over him. Well, they were in pass rush mode right there. It's like they try to roll out to the right and slip it back to him. Kind of the old... Statue of Liberty looking play there. Pretty slick little play, but, but too much penetration uh, by that defensive line, particularly Whitney Garrett. Third goal for the 17. A touchdown taken off the board. And Coach Webster let the officials hear about it. After it hit Jackson on a little five-yard touchdown, and the big fullback scored, but Rouser's holding penalty. Backs the Tigers up. They got to stay with it to try to take the lead here. After. Holding it now, he'll take off left side. He'll hold it again, looking, 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 throws, and it is deflected incomplete. Here comes the flag, flying in late. Boy, about to pass interference. They're going to catch a big break. None of his receivers really, really got into his line of vision. He rolled out to his left. All his receivers kind of hung around the middle of the field to the right. Nobody really made an urgent effort to get over and to try to make a play on the right side of that field on that scramble drill. Coach Jones is upset as he's looking at the big board, looking at the replay on that one. We'll take another look at it here. 
Now look where he gets the uh, pressure. And look, he rolls to the right. Look where all, look, he rolls to his left. Look where all his receivers are. Yeah. Hanging back in the middle of the field. Look over there. Not a single Number receiver. Six on the defense. The penalty is to the two-yard line. First and goal. They caught a break there. They yeah. caught a break there. So the Tigers, who gave one away a moment ago, they get the break. Now can they cash it in? First and goal from the two after the interference penalty. 13.56 to go, 13 all. The jumbo package again, full house backfield. They give it to Williams. He stumbled coming out of his break. Falls forward for the touchdown. He did get across the line. No flags. And the Tigers retake the lead. Yeah, his tread did spin a little bit, but he found a way to root hog his way into the end zone there. Great run by Javaris Williams. Yeah, he stumbled, fell forward. The big jumbo package in there. Tigers retake the lead at 19-13. And Eric Benson will come on for the extra point. Duval Young, who has been, uh, who came in when Avery and Alexander went out, was in at fullback right there and cleaned it out. Created a little bit of a crease. Got a flag on this play. Benson boots it through. It's going to be offsides on A&M. There you see Javaris Williams gets that two-yard touchdown. Offside, number 19 on the defense. The penalty is going to be declined. The points are good. See, that tells you how important timing and operation are when a man jumps offside and still can't block the extra point. 20 to 13, the Tigers retake the lead. Stay with us when we come back. One of the Tiger greats, Mike Jones, will join us here in the booth on CSS. Yeah, the Tigers retake the lead. Javaris Williams, two-yard touchdown. Eric Benson's point after 10, 20 to 13. Tim Eric set to kick it off to the Bulldogs. We'll see what A&M can do. These teams going back and forth here in this second half. It'll be Scott and McConico back deep. And Eric kicking off here tonight, doing the punting. Benson is handling all of the uh, extra point and field goal duties. And Eric puts the foot to it. And he nails this one right out of bounds. Not what he wanted to do at all on that one. We want to welcome uh, into our press box booth here with us now one of the Tiger greats, Mike Jones, who holds so many records at Tennessee State and Mike is the uh, head coach of the Frankfurt Galaxy the 2006 World Bowl champs in NFL Europe Mike welcome to the broadcast thanks a lot good to have you here at the John Merrick Classic and I know it's great to come back and uh, you were honored right before the game part of the ceremonial coin toss and I know you love this university well I think it's been good to me and obviously to some of the other student athletes that have came through here but uh, truly, the football program has shined on me here at Tennessee State. Well, you had a great career. Mike played from 79 to 82 and won a lot of ball games. The Tigers were 35-6-1 and one during your four years and uh, you know, just didn't lose hardly at all. We're back uh, to action here. A little rollout by Luke, incomplete. But Black College National Champ, three of your four years here in 79-81. And 82, you did a lot of winning. Yes, yes. And I, I think it's a direct reflection on the coaches such as John Merrick Classic that we have today that uh, instill those type of winning traditions in us, as well as Coach Gillum. Uh, Coach Gillum was a big part of what we did, as well as Cat Coleman. And uh, truly, I think now that I look back as I coach now, those guys are a part of what I do. Tell, tell me, what are some of the principles that you learned from Coach Gilliam that uh, you were able to apply now in your coaching career? I, I think the first one is you got to be tough but fair. Uh, they got to understand what business is about, even on the college level for football. Um, there's no room for uh, sloppiness, laziness. Uh, you got to come out and play every day. And, and I'm surprised because I'm trying to remember how could we, as a players back in those days, um, finish a practice because when we did special team, it was live. You know, there wasn't no such thing as go down and tag a guy. It was you tackle a guy. So uh, I, I think that was a big part of what we did. And, and just the tradition itself made a big part of it. Luke able to hit Harris. And that guy again, Richard Harris, always comes up big. 
and uh, this one across the midfield ball popped free for a moment. Check it. I, I met Kevin Francis, the player that made the catch a moment ago. Francis come up with some big catches tonight for AM and this one. See the replay. Popped out there at the last minute. Boy, I thought he I thought he uh he delivered the lick, but it looks like he caught the uh the front of it. Yeah. You can see him just kind of go the limp there for a minute. He's having trouble getting up. Yeah, it's Carlos Jones. I yeah. think he's having I think he's trying to figure out where he is right now. Right. Mike Jones with us, the TSU career leader in receptions with 200, and TD catches with 40. Number two in re receiving yards, over 3,500 yards. Number two in career scoring with 258 points. You just really tore up the record book when you were here, <laughs> and they're still standing. Well, I, I think records are meant to be broken, and uh, truly, I think uh, John Holland, who was ahead of me in the, in the days that I was playing, um, had an opportunity to chase his record. So obviously yeah, there's going to be some guys throughout the years come close to it or pass it. But it's, I think it's a great uh, feat for not only the individual, but for our offense at that time. It's really amazing considering how much more uh, passing is a part of the game now as opposed to then. I mean, Coach Merritt was a, a strong believer in running the football. Yeah. So to put up those kind of numbers yeah. in that era, man, really, really says a lot about you. Well, I, I think when you go back and you look at the guys in, the, in that era, uh, Tremaine Johnson who played with Gremlin and then also Jerry Rice at Mississippi Valley State. So you had a lot of good receivers to come out of this league. Second down and four play now from the 47. The Bulldogs on the move, trailing 20 to 13. Kelsey Luke, their quarterback. And a quick hitter. A first down on a nice catch. And there's the tight end. Going back to use Charles Moody there at 6-2. Hadn't seen much of him since uh, very early on in this game, but boy, he's got some big soft hands and he's got that big body and knows how to create some space. Nice placement of that ball by Kelsey Luke. First and 10 now from the Tigers. 37. Team's just going back and forth, trying to answer. Luke will step up. He's got room. Still on his feet, running. Nice cut back all the way to the 15, and that sprint out play sometimes works to the outside, but sometimes you cut it back in, and there's something there. you got to stay in your lanes when you're going against Kelsey Luke. It, it, this guy's essentially a running back with the ball in his hands on every play. And, on the the and they got to know that, hey, they get bunched up in there, especially when you blitz. you got to stay in your lane. Lost your lane discipline right there, and Kelsey Luke really, really hurt him by getting out of the pocket. First down, A&M Bulldogs. Again, Mike Jones with us, former Tiger receiver and the head coach of the Frankfurt Galaxy. They beat the Amsterdam Admiral 22 to 7 to win the World Bowl champs 2006 in NFL Europe. First down play, he's putting out to the near side this time. Got a lead blocker out there. And will tuck it back up, stay on his feet instead of going out of bounds. Get the tough yards down to the eight. Barry, the amazing thing is we talked so much in the first half about how good of a job those defensive ends were doing, keeping our outside arm free and not, a let, not allowing Luke to do this. And now here we see in the second half, they have made some kind of adjustment and they feel like they have an opportunity to take advantage of that matchup on the edge. He's gotten that edge every time he's wanted it. Edwards is limping. Defensive end, one of the defensive captains, the senior out of Decatur, Georgia, as he's heading over to the sideline. And Luke, second and short, second and four from the eight-yard line. The Bulldogs trying to answer. They're down seven. They've had problems in the kicking game tonight. With a couple blocks. But they got to punch it into the end zone first. They get to Nick Luke. He heads up the middle. He'll get the first down. They're inside the five. Goal to goal now. Boy, they really like pulling that guard, Christian Smith. Big guy, but he's athletic. He gets out there in space, and he, he's really done a good job. And anytime you see them pulling somebody, it's going to be Christian Smith. Bulldog faithful just below us here in the press box. They're hooping it up, trying to tie this ball game up. It has been a good one tonight. And we knew it would be. We knew the Tigers would come back after last year's loss, and A&M 
They're one of the top teams in 1AA, picked to win the SWAC's Eastern Division. Moody, the tight end in motion, falling forward in his stance. They go with the double tight ends, and John Smith on that left side of the line just fell forward. There's never a good time for a penalty, but when you're in the red zone, the snap, and I can ask Coach Jones here, when you're in the red zone, the, offense, the penalty's five yards, remains first down. Does anything make a coach pull his hair out more well, frequently than a penalty in the red zone? That's the toughest part, and I think pre-snap penalties are the toughest. And, and what you preach and teach to you guys is we got to eliminate pre-snap penalties. That's, that's just what we call uh, eliminate bad football, and you got to be able to do that. To back him up, it'll be first and goal now from the eight. And Luke Kelsey will get to Nick. Nick still on his feet, will not go down. And finally, the Tigers stack him up at the three. I thought he was going to roll off some tackles and get to the near side and fall in. He wouldn't go down. Boy, once again, he gets right on the inside hip of that big guard pulling across there. Uh, Christian Smith. Their most athletic offensive lineman, but man, he finds a way every time to kind of hide behind that big guy and keep his leg drive going there and almost gets it in. The one thing I do really like about what Alabama A&M is doing, they're running the football down here in the red zone. Again, they're allowing a chance to get off the ball and get out there. Second and goal from the two. Nick Luke, he is met and dropped for a loss. And a big stop in there for the Tigers, Leonard Davis in a bear hug, wrapped up Luke. You saw Leonard Davis come in the game a little bit earlier when Jonathan Edwards went out. And uh, boy, he makes the most of the playing time that he's getting there. Leonard Edwards getting penetration on that goal line and a big play on second down for the Big Blue Tigers. And again, no question, four down territory. The struggles that they've had tonight in their kicking game, the clock moving ticking down near 940 now as we're looking at a third and goal at the five for a and m boy watch these tight ends down here on the goal line luke pump fake throws mm -hmm. and there it is the big target smith the tight end with the touchdown we get a flag on the play possibly on the tigers and then we get a flag right after the catch that one may be on the big guy. I, I think anytime you get down here in the goal line, out there, the first guy you got to look for is a tight end. And I think the number one route you got to cover is that toast route by the tight end. And they did a great job here running a good toast route. And I tell you, anytime you play man, it's tough to stop that well, toast it, it route. It is really tough because you're matching up a tight end with a safety or, uh, you know, with a smaller guy. And essentially that turns into basketball. He yeah. goes in, he just posts up, and he just waits for yeah. that rebound to come down. Yes, and... and, and Defense see it all the time, but somehow or another, they never react as well as they see it. Yeah. So uh, it's a tough one, tough one to cover. And Larry Williford, the junior out of Knoxville West High School at 6'1", at pretty good size at free safety, but he's going up against 6'5", John Smith, the tight end, and he got the uh, pass interference. And Smith had a few words for him, got the personal foul right after it. Yeah, that's what you call, that's what you call a matchup problem right there. Yeah. When you, uh, particularly in such a small, confined area, mm -hmm. not a lot of room for him to be athletic enough to make it around and uh, try to make a play on the ball. That's, that's one place where offense can use the advantage of aggressiveness of a, of a defense. And I think right there, that safety hugged him so tight that he never thought once about the toast route. So uh, Moody and Smith combined last year, those two tight ends for six touchdowns. In the play, number two was holding. The penalty is going to be declined. Touchdown is good. After the play was over, we have a personal foul number 45 on the defense. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Now, here's where things get interesting. <laughs> this kicking game tonight. You've got a freshman, Kyler, the holder. You've got a freshman kicker in Lycia. Dominic Rogers coming off the the end has blocked two kicks tonight. This to tie it up. Bad snap. Got it again. Uh, got, got it, it again. again. That is amazing. Mike, you've been watching football a long time. Have you ever seen a guy come off the edge and block three kicks in one game? Somewhere around there, we're not protecting that edge as good as we should. And, and you gotta, you got to prep. you got to prep for that. 20 to 19, the Tigers hang on to a one-point lead as they get another blocked extra point. Come back with us here on CSN. Oh. Dominic Rogers 
Tell you what, he's in line for that defensive MVP. Three blocks tonight. He blocked two extra points. He blocked the field goal. And I tell you what, he is the difference right now. Tigers with a one-point lead, 20 to 19. Boy, most people go get popcorn when they're kicking that extra point, but it's been a thrill a minute for uh, a and tonight. Well, that penalty assessed on that personal foul. That's why they're kicking off from the 50. And we're going to send it now down back onto the field and uh, check in with Gussie Fuller. Hi. Checking the game more closely here on the sidelines. Unfortunately to Alabama's A&M's misfortune, that was a bad snap. A very low snap and thus the field, the after point was no good. Well, when you go back and you look at that situation, I thought the snapper did a good job of getting it back up. But that time, I thought it was the holder who fumbled yeah. the ball there, so it muffed the ball, which is tough. But it's been a comedy error. It's been the snapper. It's been the holder. It's been the wing guy. That's the thing. It's not one guy, not one guy that you can take out and say, hey, we've identified this one area. It's been everybody. Disastrous kicking game all night. A little play action for Hefner here. First and 10 from the 20. He is going to air it out. And that one goes incomplete. Flag on the play. Again, Mike Jones is visiting with Bubba and I up here in the booth. Mike, uh, the head coach of the Frankfurt Galaxy, they won the 2006 World Bowl in NFL Europe. Mike, you've been in that World Championship game six times, and it, I know it felt good to get that championship. Well, surely it did as a head coach. Right. Uh, I think the other ones were definitely assistant coach, but to get it as a head coach, um, I, I give a lot of that credit to our assistant coaches as well as the players who uh, really hung in there and done a great job. But uh, I tell you, we started off the beginning of the season one and two, so that gives you an idea how tough it is in that league. Well, when you're when you're only playing, when you're playing a pretty short schedule, man, one and two Pass is uh, number six on the offense. The penalty is ten yards. Repeat first well, down. Get Mason for pass interference on the Tigers. Offensive pass interference. Back them up. First and 20 now from the 10. What's the transition like coming? You're from Chattanooga. Uh, you're living in Orlando now, but you go over there and you're in Germany. You're going over to places that you've only just read about in history books, but you're living over there and coaching. Well, I, I'll give you a good scenario here. I started out in 83 with Minnesota Vikings, and we were the first NFL team over to play in Europe in London against the St. Louis Cardinals at that time. And I never thought I would go back to Europe. And lo and below, here I am coaching yeah. over in Frankfurt. So I think it's been a great uh, asset for me. But I think more importantly, uh, staying in football, football has done something for me. Uh, and that's given me an opportunity to coach and coach young men uh, and, and try to instill some of the good ca character and values that we've grown up on. What's the next step? for you, I'm sure, with uh, winning championships over there. The ball knocked free. Hefner hanging on to it. Had it knocked out of his hands, and there is the big turnover of the game right now. The Bulldogs come up with it inside the five. They take it away from Hefner. That was Chris Trailer with the uh, with the trifecta there. The sack, the fumble, and the fumble recovery all on the same play. Yep. Gets around that edge. Beach Rouser. He picked it up. It out of his hand and picked it up and almost scored. Wow. Amazing. Athletic play that's by that why, young man, Chris that's Trailer. That's why it's so important. Uh, back up. You got to get first down. You can't get behind the stick with penalties. First and goal from the four. The Bulldogs after unable to tie it up and another missed extra point. They get the big turnover, the big break of the game. Trailer gets the strip of Hepner. Tigers trying to keep him out of that end zone. Getting down to the two. I think it's pretty safe to say we won't see Alabama A&M try to kick again tonight unless they have to. This is four down territory, and uh, being down by a point, I'd probably look for him to go for two if they do score right here. Tamar Scott at 210. That carry there. Second and goal from the two. And a big hit in there. Back to Scott in the blue shirts as they come off the pile and we'll try to see who got that initial hit. Was that Buford? Boy, they bowed their neck in the middle of that line. I believe that was Carl Buford. We'll see it on this replay. Yep. Carl Buford and uh, with a little help from his friends on that one. 
Clock ticking down near the seven minute mark, a one point ball game. Tigers clinging to the one point lead. Third and goal from the three for the Bulldogs. They've been down here before. Luke on the keeper, he will get in. Kelsey Luke, the three yard touchdown and the Bulldogs turn the turnover into six and they retake the lead. That sprint pass again by Kelsey Luke and here we see they're gonna go for two. Up by five right now, seven would make it a touchdown. Six, six wouldn't really help him at all right now. But again, we see him lose contain. We see the end hooking Tennessee State's defensive end, allowing him to get to that corner, and he gets there in a hurry. Kelsey looks for the three-yard run. They have made a living on that quarterback sweep today. And again, it comes down to another big play here as they go for two to try to get the seven-point lead. If the Tigers can stop the conversion here, we do have a Tiger down, unable to pick up that, that number just yet. That's uh, Nikita Rutland is down, the senior out of Bradenton, Florida. Well, Mike, it's been a pleasure visiting with you. I know you've got folks here you want to go back and see. It's been a big night, and uh, congratulations on the World Bowl Championship, and, and good luck again next season. Thank you. I, I wish you guys well for the rest of the season. All right, Mike, nice and visiting with thank you. Thank you very much. Mike Jones, one of the greats. You pick up the TSU record book, you'll see his name all over it. We appreciate the visit with him. And just another part of that great coaching heritage. Well, what a fine, what, what a fine gentleman uh, Mike Jones is. A, boy, a great reputation he has all throughout the NFL and, and throughout NFL Europe, and a great ambassador for this university. Now the Bulldogs getting set to go for two. This is big here to make it a seven-point advantage. Luke under center. He's looking, throws, there it is. There's Moody. There's two 27-20 Bulldogs. The big target on the two-point conversion. 27-20, the Bulldogs up by seven at the John Merritt Classic. Tigers get it next on CSS. The 8th Annual John Merritt Classic here on CSS is brought to you by Bud Light. The Tennessee Lottery, Coca-Cola, The City Paper, Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance, and Richard Harris of Realty Mortgage Corporation. Tonight's attendance, 19,487 here at LP Field. And they have seen a great ball game. Now this is big now. This is why it's, it's so great to have a weapon or weapons in your return game. Tigers down seven, still plenty of time, 648. They've got two timeouts, but they've got some guys that can flat burn it, and they don't want to get it anywhere near them. You see the little pooch kick, it's loose, finally diving on it. One of the up men for the Tigers. The Tigers will have great field position, but you'll take that rather than kick it to either Mason or Morrow. That's respect, that is respect. When you would rather squib with six minutes left in the game then kicked it either one of Tennessee State's deep returners. That's a lot of respect. Well, the strip of Hefner down there inside the 10 after the penalty. And it goes back to a little deja vu. The Tigers had so much trouble with turnovers a year ago. Now they need to rise up and tie the ball game as A&M gets a big break on that turnover. They go to the ground game to Williams. He falls forward across to the 34 on first down. They're going to have to put this ball in the air if they uh, want to tie this game up. Fullback Jackson will go out. It'll be Williams and Young. After standing in the shotgun between them. Three wide with Mason the threat here to this near side. And it give us to Williams. Williams lowers his head as he gets the first down to the 42. Boy, Javaris Williams has been tough here in the second half. Really tough. And I've been impressed with the way this offensive line has played as well. Watch Javaris lower his head right here. Boom. Puts it up in there. 
You know, he's, a, he, he's got that rare ability to not only deliver a ball. I mean, he punishes you for tackling him. I mean, if you're going to tackle him, you're going to pay a price for it. And that's the thing that uh, makes Javaris Williams such a great back. Again, same formation. And Williams trying to the outside. He'll cut it back up. Five different white shirts around him, and he falls forward, getting plus yardage. You know, he had a couple of losses early when he was hitting behind the line of scrimmage, but it's been plus yardage ever since. Yeah, he's falling forward. He's picking up three, four, five, six yards every time he touches the ball. And, hey, Tennessee State, there's plenty of time left in this game. No need to panic, and you don't see the panic uh, in the body language of any of the Tennessee State players right now. Tiger spread it out, trips to the near side, and a wide out to the far side. Hepner's going to throw it, get Mason a touch, gets a nice block. Mason puts on the, the burner and up to the 40. You know, you remember the Tigers a year ago tried to run that play so many times. Just throw it in the flat to the receiver, and it just couldn't get anything happening. You get it here to Mason, boom, he is gone. Yeah, I think the thing that makes that play work so well is also being able to run the football, and, and a guy that has a feel for it. Mike Mason catches it, and before you know it, you know, it looks like he's picked up two or three yards, but hey, he's got eight or nine yards, man. His, you don't even see his feet moving. That's how fast this guy gets upfield. We go under five minutes, and the Bulldogs a 27-20 lead, trying to win back-to-back -back John Merrick classes. Hand off here, running hard again. Williams, look at him, just knock players back across the 30. Wow, this guy's caught fire. Javaris Williams has caught fire, and this is what Coach James Webster wanted to see, and this is why he was, I, I think he felt personally hurt when this young man came back after the summer in such bad shape, but has worked himself into shape, and there was no doubt. I mean, he was number two on the depth chart. There was no doubt who right. the best running back on the team was, and uh, he has really caught fire here in the second half, and they're going to need to lean on him throughout this season. First down play here inside the 30 are the Tigers. You know, we highlighted Kevin Lockhart in the first part of this game and we really hadn't called his name a lot tonight. Man. I think the interior of that Tennessee State defense has done a pretty good job, but Alabama A&M needs a timeout because they are back on their heels right now. We're going to take a timeout with them as well. 4.27 to go. Tigers marching to tie it up down 27-20 here on CSS. Head coach James Webster has not got a win yet on this home turf at LP Field. He's on the wrong side of a 27-20 score with 4.27 to go, but the Tigers are on the move on a second and eight. Hefner in play action has all day to throw. And he's picked off. Picked off by the Bulldogs as he threw it into traffic. And AM gets the big interception. They come up with it. Frank Moore, who got the start tonight. And Hefner threw it right to him. You know, the play was there. For some reason, Antonio Hefner held the football, and when he held it, it allowed everybody to get covered up. But the play was definitely there. If he threw it right there, right there would have been a touchdown, but he patted that ball twice. You can't do that. You know, if you're going to throw that, you need to throw it up at the back of the end zone in the corner where only your guy can get to it. But uh, by the time by the time that he threw the ball, they had already diagnosed the flea flicker, and they were on it. Bad decision by Antonio Heffern. Frank Moore, the sophomore out of Etowah, Alabama. Played at Gadsden High School. Comes up with the big pick for the Bulldogs here. And they're going to keep it on the ground. The Tigers are going to have to get a stop defensively and get it back. TSU with two timeouts remaining. We're under four minutes to go. Javaris Williams tonight, 21 carries, 126 yards. But the Tigers went to the air. And a well-designed play, but just took too long and then waited and waited, like you said. And a big time interception. Yeah, you either, you either throw that on time or you just throw it out of bounds. And uh, that was uh, where you start to see a little bit of the inexperience of Antonio Hefner. Right? Well, we've talked about his poise, but when you get right down to it, you know, he's only played, only started the one game at quarterback. Of course, it was at Auburn. But this is a guy that's still learning the game. He plays very poised, and he looks relaxed and calm, but he'll go back, look at this tape, and, and know the mistakes that he's made and just get better and better. The guy is just a sophomore. Yeah, he, he's definitely going to grow, and he's definitely going to improve. But uh, he'll learn a lot from this game. He'll learn a lot from that play. 
Well, as we think back to a year ago, A&M was in a similar situation. They stopped the Tigers and got the ball back late in the game and then went three and out. So TSU had the ball back with like 22 seconds and marched it down and got within about 20 yards of the end zone before the uh, This is a big play right here, Barry. If they can hold them on this third and one and get the ball back, they'll still have a, still have a chance. Let's see if the Tiger defense can rise up here. They know how big this play is. And Nick Luke will go off tackle and get the first down and a lot more up to the 45. That big offensive line as well got it going in the second half for A&M. Leaning very heavily on those guys, particularly, particularly on that right side. Center Chris Franklin, Christian Smith, James Sanders. Those guys have gotten it done when they need to get it done. And, and, and second half, running the football late in the game as they try to run the clock out here is when you lean on a veteran offensive line. Tigers with two timeouts, clock ticking down. We see it at 210. Play clock down to eight. They want to run as much of that as possible before snapping. Force TSU to burn those timeouts. Good hard running up the middle. A&M just senses it. They've made the big plays. We've talked about their defense. They're one of the best defensive units in the country a year ago. 13th overall in one double A in total defense. Trailer got the big play. He got the trifecta. He got the, the strip, the sack, and he almost got the touchdown on the fumble recovery, but inside that five, they're able to punch it in. That was an amazing play. That was an amazing play. And uh... Tigers burn a timeout. They're down to one timeout remaining. Clock stopped, 152 to go. Bulldogs up 27 to 20. They'll be looking at a second and four play just across midfield when we come back. You just hope this year, for the Tigers' sake, that this game doesn't set the tone. You know, we talked about that in the open. Tigers lost this game. They lost it on a turnover, the interception, the final play. They were plagued by turnovers all year, went two and nine. The Bulldogs, defensively, one of the best groups in the country a year ago. They won the game off their defense a year ago. They go nine and three. Yeah, that, that, this game does set the tone. And as, as first game of the season generally does in a, in a lot of instances. And, uh, Tennessee State lost a lot of players in this game last year, and then again this year they lose their tackle. Uh, Aver and Alexander, we hope for not long. Second and four. Tigers just with the one timeout. They've got to get off the field and get the ball back into the hands of Hefner and Mason and Williams and through. Kelsey's going to keep this one. And he's fallen on by Almonte Duncan and Jonathan Edwards, who limped off earlier. He's back in there. Just wanting that clock to run. That's how they should have been defending that sprint out play, that, that quarterback sweep all night long. Timeout is charged to Tennessee State. That's their last timeout of the game. Final timeout for the Big Blue with 1.39 to go. It's going to be a third and nine play. The thing you, you're preached to from the time you're a little kid to the time you play in pro football, whatever, always keep your outside arm free. And what that means is you cannot let a man, when you're the end man on the line of scrimmage, you cannot let anybody trap your outside arm because then you lose contain and then you're, re you're relying on your, you know, your, your linebackers, your second and third level to make that play. Uh, that's one of the things these Tennessee State defensive ends have not done a good job of tonight is keeping that outside on for. He's been hooked too many times, and they've given Kelsey Luke that corner, and uh, he has taken advantage of it. One minute, 41 seconds. I'll tell you, it, it, you know, when you know what's coming and you still struggle stopping it, Tigers worked and worked. They knew what they would see out of Kelsey Luke. That sprint out play that hurt the Tigers a year ago. They've just got good personnel. This is a good football team at A&M. And, and I think the Tigers, with so many new players, it will take a little time. But this is going to be a much improved football team. Clock reset at 141, third and nine. The Tigers need to get off the field here. And it looks like they will. It'll bring up a fourth down. They'll get a stop. 130 to go as the clock is still moving. Tigers will get another shot at it, down seven. And again, we go back to the return game. They'll have about a minute left 
uh, with no timeouts when they do get this ball back. So it's, it's going to be a have to be a hurry up type situation. Kyler's going to punt it. She stands back at his own 33. Jarrett Morrow. And they angle it as it'll bounce. And A&M will down it. Tigers will have it. Looks like about the 23 with 52 seconds to go. They have no timeouts. They're down seven. We talked about it earlier. It's like we put the tape in of last year's game. We're seeing it all over again. Uh, deja vu all over again, as, as, as uh, Yogi Berra once said. <laughs> and not only is it the score similar right now, exact same score as last year's game, minus the extra point, but... Uh, the pattern of this game went a lot like last year's game went. TSU had the lead at the half, and right. uh, penalties and turnovers in the second half cost them the lead. Tigers go four wide. Hefner out of the shotgun. Hefner holding it, throwing across the middle, deflected, almost picked off. It was deflected in there. Johnny Baldwin almost had it. After it was initially tipped by Al Donaldson, the free safety. Second down. Clock stopped with 40 seconds to go. Tigers need a big play. Make the draw to Young, and then Hefner will throw it into traffic. Catch made by Mason with two guys on him, but throwing it underneath. He'll be stopped just shy. Yep, he's going to get the first down. He'll move the chain. He'll stop the clock for a minute. Forward progress. He got the first down. 31 seconds. As the clock will wind. They're coming after Hefner again under pressure. He'll throw it. Nice catch by Stevens. He'll get out of bounds at midfield. Clock stop. 21 seconds. Hey, give yourself a chance. Give yourself a chance. Can't get it all in one play. Just bite it off in chunks. 21 seconds left, and they're at midfield. No timeouts for the Tigers. 21 seconds right at midfield. They've got receivers spread everywhere. And Hefter, the sophomore, the transfer from South Carolina at the helm, trying to redeem himself after the big interception a moment ago. Mason in the slot to the far side, part of the trips package. Hefter standing in there. Now he'll run it. He needs to get out of bounds. He gets the first down, and he jumps out inside the 30 all the way down to just about the 28, 11 seconds to go. At what point do you take a shot? I think you uh, I think you try to get it down, you know, work the sidelines right here and give yourself a good, good shot from uh, around the 20 or 15-yard line. But Antonio Heffern's done a good job of bringing them down the field, just taking what the defense gives them. As a and calls a timeout right here just to uh, talk about a little bit more. Things are tightening up a little bit. Yeah. So the Bulldogs stop the clock. They have one timeout remaining. Again, the Tigers out of timeouts. 11 seconds to go. Ball spotted at the 29. The Tigers are down seven. Very familiar, very similar to what happened a year ago. Tigers were marching it in. They're trying to come back late. And an interception by Antonio Nelson sealed the fate on the final play of the game. He took it back 100 yards, and the Tigers lost to the Bulldogs 27-14. A&M, they have... Overall, the Tigers have dominated the series, but A&M's won three of the last four and trying to make it two straight. You know, A&M has, uh, off, you know, the offensively have been just very efficient. They like, hadn't done anything great, but when you get the ball on a two-yard line, boy, it's hard to uh, not punch that thing in. Mason again. Inside receiver on this trip to the right for the near side. Hefner with 11 seconds. He'll step up. He's looking. He's looking. Taking all day. He unloads it. It's caught. Caught by Williams. He's tackled in bounds. And that'll... One second. They're going to wait. Spotty because he did get the first down. One second on the clock. He needs to go from under center right here. Now wind it. 
Last play of the game. That's their final play. He'll roll out. Here comes the flag. He just sidearmed it to try to get it in there incomplete. They tried to get it to Mason. There is a flag. That's going to be a face mask. Boy, what a hard-fought game. What a hard-fought game. And the Bulldogs win it for the second year in a row. It came down to the final play. And Hefner flushed out, just tried to sidearm one into Mason. It falls incomplete. Flag on that final play. And that does it. 27 to 20. The Bulldogs, for the second year in a row, come into LP Field and they win the John Merritt Classic. Beating the Tigers in a great football game. You get to see the emotion on both sidelines. More than just the season opener, there's a lot at stake in this ball game. And these guys left it all out there tonight. You know, you, you talk about Antonio Hefner and what he's brought to this program. And uh, he made some mistakes, some critical mistakes, but at the end of the game, he he did what a quarterback does. That's what you, exactly what you asked him to do. He gave him an opportunity to win the football game. Johnny Baldwin kind of limping off. That was a physical contest, Barry. It was. Hard hitting, and it just got harder and harder as the night went on. We got to see two offensive lines go after one another, and a couple of great running backs tonight. Javaris Williams over 100 yards, and then Nick Luke. And we saw those tight ends. Coach Webster and the defensive staff, Ron Lambert, they're going to be seeing those tight ends and their nightmares because you get down to that goal line, Alabama A&M uses those big guys. That was the difference in the game. Role. That was the difference in the game was the Alabama A&M, uh, their big tight ends in, that, in the red zone, just like you said, and those guys just use those bodies, and just like power forwards posted up in the lane, and Tennessee State really didn't have any answers for it. Gussie Fuller is with the winning coach, Anthony Jones, down to Gussie. Congratulations, Coach Jones, on a big win and maintaining the victory two years in a row. How does it feel? Uh, it feels great. I'm very proud of my team. My coaches, uh, what a hard football game. Uh, Tennessee State was ready. Uh, Good-looking football team. I'm looking for them to do big things this year, but uh, they gave us everything we can handle tonight. Well, congratulations. Thank you. All right, enjoy your victory. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Gussie. Anthony Jones wins it for the second year in a row. He's pretty much...